Warframe is a massive game, which demands significant time and investment to gain a proficient level of skill. Because of this sheer complexity of controls, it proves to be prohibitively difficult for most people, even people experienced with playing games. But hidden within that investment to get good is the most fascinating and beautiful science fiction epic in the video game medium, and perhaps Western storytelling as a whole, at least from my perspective. Many videos on this YouTube platform have attempted to summarize the entirety of Warframe's lore for the convenience of new players and old fans alike, but I think these videos fail to serve an understanding of why Warframe's story is so resonant and impactful, especially to the uninitiated viewer. This video will explore Warframe through a lens of emotional affect and philosophical intrigue wherever it can be found. I'm not promising 100% accuracy, but rather 100% honesty with my experience of Warframe's story over years of play. Warframe is a service game, and various changes and updates have added and subsequently removed aspects of the story from being playable, so I have decided on a method that only includes what is playable in the game. There is also background lore that is available on fan wikis that has been deciphered from cryptic clues, environmental designs, comics, and information given by developers at digital extremes, in live streams, and other public communication. Whereas these sources are just as legitimate to getting a better understanding of the setting and story, I will be omitting these supplemental materials. Instead, we will begin with, what else? The Tenno. But to actually understand them, we must first understand their creators, and the source of all problems in the origin system, the Makers the Golden Gods, the Orokin. Part 1. The Orokin Critique Plato's Republic Why? Believe me, I was their loyal, murderous dog until the day that ugly child was brought to me. He was caught spying on us, amplifying our losses. His face burned. He was starved sick like a stray. Ugly as I, it struck me. We were all pit dogs, ruining ourselves for the pleasure of the glorious and beautiful. The Orican Empire, descendants of humanity, ruled over the solar system with a ferrite fist. They were relatively few in number, but masters of bioengineering, genetic alterations, cloning, to the degree that their minds, their souls, were just another biological phenomenon. By transferring their minds to new bodies on occasion, using special transference chambers, the Orican rulers were functionally immortal. A class of clone laborers, called the Grenier, built the Orokin Towers, their cities, and their infrastructure, as well as serving in an army to suppress any non orokin human factions that would reject Orokin rulership. To further safeguard themselves, the Orokin created a warrior race called the Dax. They instilled the Dax with a culture of honor and sacrifice, while they controlled the Dax bodies with their technology when they could not control their minds with culture. The Orokin also created the Corpus, a class of middle management subjects in the Orokin Empire, in charge of resource logistics and executing on the plans the Orokin created. They eventually rose to prominence through wealth, but that is a story for later on. Yet the Orokin Empire was not satisfied with total control of the Origin system. They wanted more, but they needed more power to do so. Thus, they created a new, powerful race called the Sentients to begin colonizing the Tau galaxy. But the Orokin gave the Sentients a flaw. Sentients were made such that void energy was a poison to them that would leave them barren, unable to bear children or form families. Such was their namesake of Sentient, a being capable of feeling pain, the pain of not having a family. They would return many years later in an event now called the Old War. Having realized that they created something greater than themselves, and fearing the eventual return of the Sentients, the Orokin began even greater experiments to create something capable of defeating them. First, they created the Infested, a sapient disease possessing a dull hive mind intelligence that might infect or overwhelm the sentients, but it proved too strong and virulent to control, and thus the various strains were locked away in a variety of vaults throughout the system. They created the Laura Drive, as described in the Simmerus imprint Corrupted Ancient, an adapter connected to the head, the hand, 
and a weave of void energy conducting metals that could be programmed to different effects, such as the rapid healing of flesh or bursts of force. The Laura Drive was given exclusively to the Orokin, but its asymmetry clashed with the Orokin's vain aesthetic values of purity, symmetry, and variation. Higher class Orokin hated the Lorist class for this ugliness. She's dead, said Dax Menz, growing impatient. No, she's not. I knew it. Our shuttle touched down in the ancient city center of New Uxmal for the second time in two days. We rushed to the entrance of the lower chambers, a labyrinth of tunnels carved into the rock. Behind us marched a full complement of bodyguards and moas. Menz asked again, How can you be sure? We've been connected for a century and a half, I'm sure. It felt odd to be speaking aloud about something that Rambala and I had always just kept between us. That feeling of attachment, that anxiety that welled up within one of us when the other wasn't right, that emptiness I felt when I thought they'd killed her, and the joy when the connection came rushing back this morning. We were twins, bred for purpose, cloned and then modified so that we could both interface with the Laura device. The Orokin had a visage imbued with variation, beauty, and symmetry, but we had the Laura nodes protruding from our right temples. Their skin was silken, ours was weaved with ribbons of metallic fascia that snaked around our bodies and into the Laura device embedded in our palms. We made them uncomfortable, and they made that known. That is, until they were sick or hurt, and then we were saviors. That never bothered me, though. I loved my sister, and we had each other. I wasn't about to leave her in the middle of this nightmare. Hesitation was building in Menz's face. I had command authority, but if he balked, the soldiers would follow him. I needed to force his support. If you were Tenno, there'd be no question. The betrayers? He stopped himself. Look, Rambala's gone. The infested killed her yesterday. We both saw it. His frustration was building. Damn it, this was supposed to be a relief mission. We can't- It is still a relief mission, I interrupted. You want to go back to retirement, Menz, or are you still a Dax? I knew that stung. Menz stiffened. He'd been cast aside before. He wasn't about to let duty slip through his fingers again. Menz stared into me. Are you willing to risk becoming one of those things for a feeling? I nodded. The answer was yes, for this feeling. Very well, Loris Dontella. Menz turned to his squad. Ready up! We entered the subterranean passage. Weapon lights illuminated chiseled red stone as we marched deeper into the blackness, past shops and apartments, all carved into the rock aeons ago. This city was as old as Mars's atmosphere. Everything was silent, save for the occasional snap of bone under a soldier's foot. Three days ago, this was a busy thoroughfare. Now, Bloodied scraps of clothing littered the route like confetti. We emerged from the tunnels into Cavernous Arcade, the Old Market Road. This is where she had led me. We're close, I said. Here they come, shouted Dax Menz, and creatures began to drive at us from every door and window, all teeth and claws and eyes that looked so familiar. What kind of animal has eyes like that? Square formation, Menz commanded. We backed up to a wall, and the moas moved to form a perimeter, with the bodyguards behind them and me in the middle. I closed my eyes and focused the device. Through it, I could feel each one of the bodyguards. A sergeant was slashed through the leg, and I directed my energy toward him. His wound closed, and he resumed fighting. Acid spit burned another soldier's chest. I pushed energy to her, eased the pain, then reversed the damage. She would live. This was so much harder without Rambala. Another soldier was bit on the throat. He's dying. There was nothing I could do, so I ease his pain and let him go. The rate of fire slowed. Had we pushed them back? I opened my eyes to see the Moa's beams incinerate the last few attackers. I was drained. I wasn't a combat lorist. Rambala and I were relief workers, used in disasters and outbreaks. Not this. I felt a surge of that familiar connection. Rambala's energy pulsed through me. She's coming, I shouted. What? Dax Man's head whipped around to look at me. I don't know, I said, pointing at a hall exit. She's coming from that direction. More infested, shouted a soldier who motioned to the same exit. A mess of figures shambled forth. These were different, bigger, and slower. I could feel my sister in there somehow. It was so strong. The Moas opened fire. I wanted to tell them to stop, but how could I? I felt plasma beams burn the creatures, and then I felt Rambala heal them. Why? Multiple connections now. I felt her many times over. It didn't make sense. Until it did. She was those things. All of them. 
They took our fire and kept coming. I felt her, no, them, shudder as bullets ripped through their flesh, and then as flesh was made new again. They were lorist infested. My sister, the healer, remade as a monster, and here to kill us. More rushed in. I felt the healing in them, too. I focused just as the first wave broke through our lines. Moas were toppled, soldiers were tackled, teeth tore flesh. I was overwhelmed. I couldn't control it. Their pain fed back through me and I collapsed. Something's jaws latched into my foot. Infection pulsed into my veins. And then I felt it. A new presence. Another healer? I'd felt this before. Was... it couldn't be. I opened my eyes only to be blinded by an intense flash, followed by a crash like a thousand crystal goblets, all being shattered at once. All went silent. The infested were dead. I felt nothing now. My eyes readjusted. I was surrounded by bodies. I saw something run away, a streak of silver and gold. It shot straight up the cavern wall and out into the sunshine above. I didn't have time to think. I took a breath, and a wave of pain surged through my entire body. The infestation had already taken my leg. Soon it would claim the rest of my body. I didn't care. My sister was gone. This was my time. The shadow cast itself over me. I looked up. It was men's. Alive. He stared down without speaking, and then unsheathed his massive combat blade, and raised it high above his head. Men's wait! I mumbled. I'm sorry. With sudden and sure force, his blade sliced down and through me. I contorted in with pain. His hands grabbed my shoulders. Heal yourself! The adrenaline must have struck at that moment because I bolted up. Still stunned, he had cut the infected leg clean off. Damn it, Antella! Menz was sh shaking me harder now. Heal yourself! Instinct took over. I snapped into focus and sent all the energy I had left through the device and down to the wound. I stopped the bleeding and neutralized the remaining toxin. I nearly passed out. I had nothing left. Menz hoisted me onto his shoulder. I'm taking us back to the shuttle. And he began to walk out of there. A few scattered survivors and robots pulled themselves along behind us. As we approached safely, I coughed and whispered to Menz. I can feel her again. She's dead. Yes, she is. One fateful day, a civilian ship called the Zeraman 10 0 malfunctioned when using void energy to perform a faster than light warp through space. All adults on board died, but miraculously, the children survived. Only now they seethed with an almost infinite amount of void energy. It was painful, uncontrolled. Some would slip in and out of comas. They needed time to control these newfound bodies, time that they did not have. Left under the care of an orican named Margulis, the children were placed into transference chambers where their void energy could be siphoned out, and the children could sleep in peace and harmony forever. The first dream. That is until the sentience returned. Conventional Orican warfare was no match for the sentience adaptability and regeneration. The Orican then had a brilliant idea, to pit their past failures against each other. A new class of Orican, the Archimedeans, used the infested technocytes on Dax bodies and combined it with the Laura Drive systems, crafting the undefeatable Tenno. A warrior powered by exactly that to which the sentients were vulnerable. And to control these new creatures, they would use the children of Zaraman's transference chambers to put their minds into Tenno bodies and send the children off to war. Some years later, the Tenno, having repelled the sentients, would rebel against the Orican, under the leadership of Margulis, who took on the name Lotus. The Tenno destroyed the Orican, and in the aftermath, they vanished, along with the Earth's moon leaving the remnants of the Orican Empire to figure things out for themselves. Upon close examination, the Orican Empire is structured around a model almost exactly like Plato's ideal city, the Callipolis, and where it differs demonstrates where the writers at Digital Extremes criticize the failings of the model in ways that I have not encountered elsewhere. The most substantial aspect of Plato's Republic is the myth of the metals, a founding myth that separated social classes based on people's inborn nature. Bronze for people motivated by basic needs like food, shelter, pleasure, and the like. Silver for people motivated by thumos, the desire for victory and honor. And gold for thumotic people who pointed that drive towards truth and knowledge. 
People are born into these natures and sorted into a class by an exam. And golden people are meant to occupy the ruling class. Similarly, Orokin society is heavily stratified. The various factions are literally bred to fulfill the role of that class, while the Orokin shape their own bodies to mimic Greek statuary inlaid with golden filigree to emphasize their status as rulers. The second most noteworthy idea in Plato's Republic is that some of the social classes were to have spouses and children in common. In other words, Plato suggested doing away with the nuclear family unit in favor of everyone of a class being considered one large family that is almost communally married to everyone else of the same class. Putting the incestuous undertones of this idea aside for the moment, it is the idea of connecting social class and faction with the notion of family that establishes the single most prominent motif of Warframe, the motif of family. Of course, we Tenno lovingly refer to the Lotus as our space mom, and for good reason, but it goes far deeper than that for all the other factions of the game as well. During the Orican era, the Corpus made up the bronze class of the Callipolis, always working to provide for their basic needs, but never quite having enough for themselves and the Orican's grand machinations. To them, the word Corpus itself meant family, and it is used as such in the Simris imprint Antimoa. How long are you going to tinker with that thing? Father asks. He's one to talk. Ever since we entered this junk belt, all he's done is tap on that console. This whole time he's just sat there, eyes fixed on the radar, dirty fingers tapping the drum beat to some manic song with no structure or rhythm. I ignore him and try to go back to work on the robot. Father's tap tap gets faster and more intense. Is he trying to get to me? I can't concentrate. Tell me again why we don't just approach at full speed from open space. Couldn't we just slam into the rail and punch? I ask. Because that's what we used to do. He's annoyed, but at this point I don't care. Our convoy of transport has skulked through this junk belt for days. The view screen, an endless parade of rocks and garbage. We could have been through that rail a long time ago, I say. Maybe, he shrugs. And why can't I ride in Umpal's ship? This again? He snaps back. You know why. Umpal is my best and only friend. There weren't many young people in our group, and Umpal is the only one close to my age. Truth be told, he was the only person my age I'd ever met. He was on another transport. They said it was for security reasons. We were on a trade mission. My first time outside our node. These trips were dangerous, but father said it was essential I learned the business. The whole convoy is loaded down with items we have scrapped together through months of local trade. It was mostly salvage, with some ferrite spread between the different transports. Rumor was that Umpal's transport might even have some rubido in the hold. We were heading to another survivor colony a few nodes away. They had other rare resources, but more importantly, they were close enough to the sun to grow food, and that was what this mission was really about. Before we left, Umpal and I drew wires to see which one of us got to bring the robot we were building. It was bits and pieces of scavenged Orican tech slammed together, but it was a robot and it could walk. Father didn't think much of it, but I was proud. I hoped to trade it for some rare parts when we hit the colony, enough to build a bigger second walker, maybe even one that could carry a full-size cannon. Does this look anything like you remember from the Orican days? I ask in a futile attempt to break the tension. That thing? Yeah, we had ones that walked on two legs like that, but... His fingers stopped its tapping, and he takes a long look at the robot before continuing. But they were different. Don't you miss it? I ask. What? He says. You know, the Empire. I don't think about it. He's back to tapping on the nav console. What about your corpus? Don't you miss them? Your father? I say. Orkin didn't have parents like you do. It was done differently then. He takes a deep breath and turns to look at me. Listen, the corpus who raised me are dead. Do you know why they're dead? Because of the plague? I say. Because they couldn't forget the past. I survived by worrying about two things, today and tomorrow. That is the only reason I'm alive. That is the only reason you exist. You want to remember something? Remember that. Yeah, okay. I shrug. He's given this speech before. I had learned the hard way not to push things when he got like this. I go back to working on the robot. After a few minutes of silence, I hear him exhale. Look, we're almost to the rail. After the punch, you can go over to Umpol's transport, okay? I nod and smile. Okay. The next few hours go by quickly. 
As we get closer to the rail, the density of obstacles in the belt increases. The ship's nav module calls out course correction after course correction as we dodge debris. I watch the other transports in our convoy do the same. Our progress is slowed to a crawl, but Father swears avoiding detection is worth it. I'm trying to splice a connection deep in the robot's chest cavity where the alarms sound. The radar screen lights up. I look up to see one of the other transports veer off course. Seconds later, something crashes into their hole. There's a blue flash of electricity and their ship goes dark. Then two more crashes and two more flashes. These are interceptor pods, a grenier trap. My father jumps up and begins yelling instructions to our nav system. Full power, take us up and out of the belt. That's Umpel's ship they're boarding. His face collapses into a frown. It is. They'll kill him, we have to do something. I plead. We keep going. They can't take all of us. I can barely hear him through his clenched teeth. Umpol is corpus to us. We can't abandon him, I shout. We have to. That's how we survive. His voice grows louder. What if it was us? Wouldn't you want them to? His fist slams the nav console, and as he whips around to glare at me, What are you going to do? Fight off those grenades with your MOA? I look down at the robot, a mess of parts and wires that can barely walk, let alone shoot. Neither of us say another word. Out of the view screen, I watch as Umpel's crippled ship, now swarmed by Grenier, shrinks into blackness. When their entire purpose in life is to have their appetites sated, but were kept perpetually wanting, it is no wonder that, following the tenets of their leader, Parvos Granum, the corpus evolved into a greedy and indulgent society in the post orican era. Parvos Granum is something like an Adam Smith and his book, The Wealth of Nations, but specifically for the attitudes and the cult-like beliefs of late-stage capitalism today. This is his story. Humble Beginnings Day after day we toiled, my father, my brother Claudius, pulling grains for the Orican takers in the city, as our kind had done for generations. We were young, but the work made us old. Our backs ached, our hands bled, the sun tortured our skin. In the worst times, it felt as though death would claim us before the day was through. It was on one such afternoon that I was fated to first hear that glorious sound, a whisper I strained to hear, in a tongue not of man, but of something else, something grander, a language I understood instinctively, the language of desire. It said, Fear not poverty. Poverty is the bitter soil in which sweet desire blossoms. To the city, the more we toiled, the more impatient I grew. A fire raged inside me. I wanted more. I deserved more. But how? The whisper washed over me, louder now than before. Fortune despises the idle man. Stasis is death always move forward. And so, with only the whisper to guide me, I straightened my back, wiped the dirt off my hands, and left. What rights do they have? The city, those towers? I was struck with awe. What glorious totems of greed those Orican had built, built on our backs. Their wealth was my wealth. I was starved while our masters were fat and full and warm. They flaunted their wealth, left it sitting there for the taking, priceless gemstones decorating the tower gates. I was afraid, but the whisper gave me courage. Be envious, covet, then take what you desire. So that is what I did. The taking. I was brash and bold. I struck at midday. I cried. I take what I am owed, as I ripped jewels from their tower gates and ran. I did not get far. For my blasphemy, they dragged me to the tower square, throwing me to the ground in front of the sneering crowd of Oricon servants that mingled there. The guards held aloft my satchel, containing the proof of my crime. I grasped at it, determined to reclaim what was mine. He snatched my arm, held me high, and with a dash of his plasma dagger, severed my left hand. The crowd jeered, yet I felt no pain, only clarity. For the whisper was with me again. It said, Deception is the sword of wisdom. Be wise. They took my hand that day, but they did not take what I had earned. Crawling back. I crawled back to the fields, where I collapsed before my father and my brother. I was so near death they had read my Nava rites. My brother Claudius bemoaned me as a fool. How could I have abandoned them? Guilt washed over me. I asked the whisper, was he right? And the whisper replied, Beware the idle man who would lull you back into idleness. Hearing this, I felt the life force stream back into me. I sat up. They protested. I stood and they tried to pull me down. I was too strong. There was now a fire in my chest that would not be denied. 
the gemstone, moving swiftly from sickbed to field, I fell to my knees beneath that relentless sun, my chest afire, as it moved to my throat, robbing me of breath. Certain death had finally found me. I had made one last heave. I spat it out, a molten red gemstone of the purest, clearest rubido. Swallowing that stone would have killed a man of weaker will, but not a man sustained by the power of desire. It was worth more than my family had earned in ten generations. It would fetch enough to feed us all for a lifetime. As I stared into its brilliant facets, a familiar voice rushed through me. Contentment is idleness. Desire inspires action. Nurture all desires. And so, with my brother and father pleading for my return, I once again left for the city. A new beginning. In desire I was wealthy, but in strategy I was empty-handed. I listened for the whisper. It said, money begets money. With my jewel as collateral, I secured a loan, and with that sum I gave my own loans to poor men like me who desired more. With each loan, I dispensed truths I had learned from the whisper. Those men went out into the world, and they too made loans, and their money too begat money. Word spread fast. Men flocked to hear me. I told them of the evils of contentment and idleness. I taught them the gift of desire giving back. In time my money multiplied into multitudes. With this wealth I made my body whole again. The news came. Father had collapsed in the field. I rushed back to my family's humble farm to be by his side, but his death was sudden. Claudius mourned, but I was committed to ending the brutal labor my family and people had endured for generations. The whisper approved. It said, charity is power. More charity is more power. Bury the past. Claudius begged me to stop my megadozers. If you build a city on these fields, what will we eat? To which I replied, Just as I consumed the gemstone that fed my fortune, our people will eat the wealth I have bestowed upon them. What of our home, he cried, our traditions? I pondered this until the whisper gave me the words, Shun sentimentality. It is a weakness that binds the idle man. A new empire. I believe my father would have smiled with pride as I smashed my family home into the dirt. It saddens me that father did not live to see the glory of Corposium, the city I erected upon our meager land. Men of desire will always be outnumbered by idle men, men of fear. But small men can never hold back the men of strength and desire. Fulfill desire and others will follow. We are corpus. My gift to the future is an idea. An idea that wealth need not settle as a crust upon the upper echelons of the population. No, any poor grain farmer can, should he feed his desire and apply his wisdom, take fortune for himself. The more the better. And when men of fortune come together under great leadership, their potential is exponential. Just as money replaced what the Orokin took from me and made my body whole again, our collective desire will create a new body, a body forged of fortune and unencumbered by idleness and sentimentality. Ours is the grasping golden hand. We are desire. We are corpus. Parvos Granum's gold prosthetic hand is an allusion to Adam Smith's idea of the invisible hand of the market, which has evolved into some capitalists believing that free markets are entirely self-regulated and will distribute capital to the people most capable of fulfilling people's needs and desires, thus increasing the total wealth for everyone involved. It also functions as an inversion of the myth of the metals found in Plato's dialogue, associating gold with the values of consumption which originally lied with bronze, the lowest class of society. In reality, we have approximately 10 to 20 year cycles of massive recession and depression fueled by ultra-wealthy, bad-faith actors in the forms of monopolies, real estate, and banks creating profitable schemes that frequently work by playing off of racially motivated bigotry or artificially tying public welfare to their business's own financial success. With these problems and the disappearance of the middle class, as more and more people are either ultra-wealthy or poverty-stricken, it is no wonder that more and more people are seeking external regulation by the government, which Adam Smith fully calls for and supports in his book The Wealth of Nations. The ideas of external regulation on social institutions will be returning in a non-economic capacity later on. 
But returning to Plato's Republic during the Orican era, the Grenier and the Dax made up the silver class of the Callipolis. Plato's Republic recommended that these Thumotic people needed to be controlled because their skill and their drive made them dangerous. To sate their thirst for honor, Thumotic people attempt to gain wealth and resources in abundance so as to be admired by the bronze class of people, and so to achieve control over this class, silver people were to become a military such that they would get the honor they crave in service to the state rather than through destabilizing the other classes. The Grenier see every clone of their faction as nuclear family members, as per Plato's suggestion. Counselor Vehek and Tyl Reger violently shout their family ties at the player any chance they get. But the Orokin treated their Grenier clones with contempt and disgust rather than honor and respect. Thus, when the Grenier evolved greater intelligence and self respect with each cloning, they bided their time until the end of the old war to take their honor for themselves, as relayed in the Simris imprint Arid Eviscerator. The faces of the survivors all lined up for evacuation were etched with confusion when the lift doors closed in front of them. We descended to the hum of the lift flying through the tower. I turned and smiled at Avantis. I was beginning to believe you were going to bring them all with us. Nonsense, Bill said. That's simply not feasible. You know we need to find safety and re-establish the Congress of Executors. We have no time for a rescue mission. Besides, those people know their place, and they just did their duty. We will see to it they are honored when our Orican Empire returns to glory. We were safe for the moment. When the infestation took over, the entire tower went into lockdown. Avantis's executor status meant that she, and by extension I, were among the few people who could move freely about the massive vessel. The lift slowed, and I overrode the controls to keep the doors closed. We listened for what seemed like forever. Do you hear anything? I said. No, I don't smell anything either. Let's go, said Avantis, raising her pistol. The doors opened to a darkened room. The light of the lift illuminated scattering figures, but this wasn't the infested. They were still alive. You there, step forth, Avantis commanded, and out of the shadows came several burly figures. Grenier soldiers, I said with an almost childlike excitement as others joined them. Grenier workers, useless to us, said Avantis. Despite everything, she still looked glorious in her full regalia and golden siandana. Have you not been taught protocol? I shouted. An executor stands before you. The workers look at each other, puzzled. Then the biggest one kneeled and bowed before us. One by one, the other Grenier followed. Avantis shook her head in disbelief and went to the nearby console to turn on the lights. We were in the mechanical workshop. Tools and cases lined the walls and supply crates edged the room. That precept said the hangar is through the next hall. Avantis stepped around the still-kneeling Grenier and toward the rear doors. No, stop, protested the big Grenier. Danger. We kept walking, but sure enough, when we got close, the doors shook and moaned with the scraping of claws. Oh, those imbeciles, Avantis cursed. They said this sector wasn't compromised. It doesn't sound like that many. Can we fight through? I asked. What, just two of us? With pistols? What about... I motioned to the Grenier workers. With no weapons? There's not enough of them to be decoys, she said. We paced in silence until one of the Grenier, that big one, ran to a tool case on the wall and tried to force it open. Avantis noticed this and waved her hands over the nearby console to unlock the case. The rest of the workers rushed over and grabbed the bigger grinder saws and plasma cutters. They put on safety equipment as if it were body armor. Always wanting to cut something, I see said Avantis to the workers. The big one nodded and smiled. Did he have any idea what those things might do to him? They lined up shoulder to shoulder against the door while we stood a few paces behind with a couple more at our side. The infested thumped and howled. They could sense us. Their stench penetrated the doors and attacked our nostrils. Avantis looked over at me. Bilsa, it goes without saying we won't be sharing that ship with the likes of these. I gave her a sideways look. Why would you say that in front of them? Oh, child, they do not have the comprehension, she laughed. They are content to do the job they were bred to do, only now they get to cut infested flesh instead of scrap metal. I looked at the Grenier. They did seem unfazed. Grenier? Work! Commanded Avantis, and the Grenier revved up their saws. 
I opened the hall doors and a wave of infested crashed and collapsed against a solid wall of blades. Viscera pooled at our feet. A monster would tear one down, only to have another grenier take its place. Move! She yelled, and the grenier wall marched forward, a line of death that eviscerated anything in its path. We reached the hangar doors at the end of the hall and prepared for the worst. On the other side could be hundreds. Advantis gave the grenier a moment to shake the guts out of their tools and catch their breath. Then she nodded for me to release the locks. We all braced ourselves as the doors opened to... nothing. No infested, just a lone ship on the other side of a massive hangar. Relieved, we sprinted across the open expanse. As we approached the ship, Avantis said, Bilsa, you open the shuttle. And then added quietly, I'll make sure we don't have any guests for our trip. I went to work at the nearest console, and the Grenier encircled me to fend off any possible threats. Avantis stood at the ship's entrance with a few more of the grunts guarding her. More coming! She pointed at a swarm of infested charging from where we came. Grenier! Attack them! Go! She bellowed. The Grenier stiffened. Their blades roared, but stayed their ground. Incensed, she cried louder. I said go! Now! but the grenier did not move from the shuttle door. It's open, I shouted, turning just in time to see the biggest grenier drive his saw right through Avantis's spine. The high-pitched whir of metal on bone masked her screams, and she collapsed to the floor. Her pearl-white robes were now dyed crimson. Her dead eyes looked through me. I started to run, but was struck in the face and knocked to my knees. The big grenier loomed over me. Now you work for us. Make the shuttle. Go. The Dax, on the other hand, were taught values of honor and duty, but they were also more directly controlled through Orokin technology, not through the Orokin paying their respects. Thematically consistent with Plato's political theory, when the Dax were forcibly evolved into the Tenno, they proved to be too powerful to be controlled, and eventually destroyed the Orokin's delicate hierarchy. The Orokin, as the golden people of the Calipolis, were meant to be rulers that were primarily concerned with truth and wisdom, but in lacking wisdom, the Orokin could only rule through immense scientific knowledge and immense oppressive force. They were not seeking to obtain lofty ideals of a philosophical utopia, but instead were concerned with keeping a great many people to praise and worship them. In this sense, the Orokin are more Machiavellian than anything else. And it is this misbehavior of the Orokin that I find to be the most perfect critique of Plato's Republic. Centered on this idea of thumos, that each person is driven to some extent by the desire for honor and respect, Warframe uses the Orokin to ask the question, why would thumos be different in the mind of a philosopher than in anyone else? Some people seek honor and respect through combat, war, and national service, for sure, but others seek honor through riches and material possessions. Thus, if a person were to seek honor through knowledge, through knowing more than other people, what then would motivate that person to avoid manipulating truth and knowledge to maximize their own honor and dominance? Nothing at all. A thumatic ruling class, even if knowledge is the object by which they rule, will inevitably want to hog all of the honor for themselves, and thus become corrupt and elitist by this ulterior motivation. It thus makes perfect sense for the Orokin to have shifted all of their knowledge toward the aesthetics of purity, symmetry, and variation. Hiding knowledge behind beauty was just another way to control the honor and worship of other peoples. Aesthetics is the sub-branch of philosophy concerned with the questions of what is beautiful, and how do we assign value to things. Because of how interconnected aesthetics is with how people define worth and worthiness, many people, including those that value artistic media, often confuse aesthetics with being wholly encompassing of all philosophy, rather than treating it as a very specific field that leads into the philosophy of art. As the Orokin era came to a violent end, leaving the non-Orokin factions to vie for control, the few Orokin who survived had their sense of beauty, which they confused with truth and the divine right to rule, ripped away from them. Alad V, first giving up his Orokin filigree to become a corpus, only to later lose this identity even more when he was made subservient to the sentience, and finally losing his symmetry as he succumbs to an infested outbreak. Balas, 
presenting his grotesquely long asymmetrical arm and going on to be reshaped by the sentients to more closely fit the message of sentient pride. The Orican family on the Deimos moon exhibited perfected impurity, asymmetry, and identity with the infestation. Would you like to hear a story for Nabarus? One that I told my grandchildren when they were small. Very well. Long ago, in the Orican days, a golden people lived in spoiled luxury. If a body wore out, why? They would take a new one as easily as plucking a maprico. Such was the mystery of the Kuva. So, what became of death and disease? Oh, they were abundant, but not for the Orokin. They were above petty death. Such was their contempt that they decreed a special day on which to make fun of it. On Nabarus, the Night of Memory, the Shining People laughed at death. They dressed in costumes that recalled the old days of mortality. Skulls grinned, hallways guttered with demon lights. For one night, beauty was banished. Rot and monstrosity held sway. Now, on one very special Nabarus, three pretty Orican were bored, as Orican so often were. Nabarus no longer holds its magic for me, sighed one. Masks and costumes are for children, grumbled another. Why follow the crowd, mused the third. Are we not the very elite of the elite? Ha ha! Up, my Kissingtons, my luscious loves. Send for blue couver and hot lights. I have a sport that will mend all. And in the corridor, behind a curtain, a solitary silent girl heard them and said nothing. Then the three were very wicked. For what do you think they did? Down into the streets they went, and they caught three poor Austrians and bore them back to their gilded halls. One they peeled like a fruit and decked out with glassy splinters, and his naked jaws went chitter chatter snap and it echoed all around. Scarlet footprints he left. Another's limbs they twisted and wrenched his neck and made a bundle of him until he scuttled upsy downsy like a horrid crab. With his sockets all empty and his stretched out nose snuffling. The third they pulled thin in hand and foot. She walked spindly-wise on long tiptoes like a spider, and her entrails hung delicately down. She whispered, split-tongued and hissing as she went. Fine costumes we've made, chortled the three Oregon. Let us now try them on and visit our friends. What shrieking there will be! Oh, our names will live forever in the court for such a prank as this. Now, the silent girl brought them their blue couver, so they could take on these twisted bodies for only a short time before returning to their own. They drank and slept and woke in their three horrid forms. Off they went, down the stairs, out the door, into the city, into the night of banners and masks and wild hilarity. Chitter-chatter-snap, scuffle-buttle, whispery-hispery. 
As you can imagine, there were many screams and laughs. Such cleverness, such wit. But in a high room of the tower, the silent girl looked at the faces of the three sleeping Oregon. She went and opened a little ivory door that she was not supposed to know about and drew forth a flask that she would have been glassed for even looking at. A flask of crimson kuva, the scarlet seal upon continuity, permanent. And she tipped it down three cruel throats. With a little laugh, she went skating away, never to return. There were many screams that nabarous night, but when the sun came up, none screamed so loud as the three who found that they were trapped in the hideous bodies they themselves had fashioned forever and ever. So, listen carefully, Tenno, and beware. For you may hear them coming tonight, whispery hispery on long stalking bones, scuttle buttle with his eyes all empty, and skinless, dripping handed, chitter chatter snap. Happy Nabarus! <laughs> With the Orokin out of the picture, and a short time of Tenno absence, a new era arrives, and with it, a new founding myth. For generations you've slept. No purpose. No call to wake you. of the old war, swallowing colonies whole. But there's still hope. The Tenno, monuments of an ancient warrior caste, scattered across frail worlds.
forgotten. Like a dream. Taking this one with us. What has he done to you? I can't lose another Tenno. Don't... Quick, use your power. Defend yourself. After centuries of slumber, Captain Vor has uncovered an ancient Orican artifact, a void key, the Janus key, which allowed Vor to access something long lost to the origin system, void energy. And with it, Vor sees a potential, an ambition, to use the Janus key to shackle and enslave the great warriors that defeated the mythic Orokin Empire. But before Captain Vor could reach us, Margulis, the Lotus, wakes us up There's before a cache we of weapons ahead. Grab what you can. Good. The extraction point is up ahead. Hurry, before Vor finds out you've escaped. A tenno flows like fire over the battle terrain. Do you remember how to dash up walls? Salvage team, why have you not reported in? You made it. There is the extraction ship. Decrepit heart is pounding. This one is stronger than the rest. Lock the quick. Get to the console and release the lockdown. Do that, and I will guide you to your old ship. It's your only chance. The queens want to destroy you, but I need to know more. Stop touching me, you. What? Are my senses deceiving me? Operator, is that you? Enemy reinforcements are here. Ship Cephalon, we require immediate extraction. Need a few moments to cycle the engines. Tenno, are you afraid? You cannot hide from these sword eyes. I've marked you. You will return to me. Vor retreats to Mars, and we set out to trek across the solar system to hunt down Vor and remove our shackles. As we travel, we see the Grenier poisoning the Earth to progress their chemical engineering research. We open the solar rails, light-speed highways between planets, to travel to Venus. And on Venus, we discover what has become of the Corpus, the poor and needy middle class of the Orican Empire, now a massive capitalist cult inspired by their founder, Parvos Granum, literally worshipping the Void as a deific source of money, enslaving non-Corpus people such as the people of Fortuna, holding their bodies as capital to feed their workforce, and for betting on a blood sport they call the Index, all under the management of Parvos Granum's descendant, Nef Anyo. In an attempt to exert power and authority, the Corpus have continued to refine their most lethal security proxy, the Jackal, determine its location aboard this vessel, and destroy it. 
Every Warframe has at its disposal a special blade, a Parazon, as lethal to technology as it is to flesh. Disrupting the Jackal's auto repair may require it. Remember, the Jackal's auto repair precepts could make this a battle of attrition you will lose. Watch for an opening and remember your Parazon. I expected it to be bigger. Still mobile despite the damage, but if it comes down hard, it could give you an opening. Loosened grip wall. Stay ahead of it. Flex plates on the torso, but appendages could be a weakness. Tenno, use your pairs on. Watch your angles, Tenno. You're running out of cover. Overdrive precepts. Watch for increased attack speed. Critically damaged. Finish it off. Well done, Tenno. You have sent a clear message to the Corpus today. Their war profiteering will not go unpunished. Keep going. Nobody knows you're here. I've identified several vulnerable data consoles on this base. Find them and hack in. We need to know the nature of their new bioweapon. The Tenno! Keep them away from the specimens! Destroy them! Dr. Tengus demands absolute secrecy! But finally we make it to Mercury, only to discover that the Grenier mining teams have accidentally awakened the infestation, which the Orokin had long vaulted beneath the surface of the planet. My scans are not detecting any known biochemical agents. What are they doing down here? Data destruction is imminent. You need to hurry. Excellent work. A clean extraction with no alarms. Who released the specimens? They're out! What's going on? Stop the infested! Forget the Tenno! Infested? This shouldn't be possible. We need to know what is going on here. Who let them out? Was it Tengus? Tengus did this. I know he did. Someone released these creatures on purpose. They want them to destroy you. This Grenier ship tried to flee the infestation, but was quickly overrun. Exterminate everything on board before it reaches a more populated sector. The Grenier may have thought they could toy around with the infested, but they are quickly learning how wrong they were. We thought the infested died off with the Orican. For hundreds of years, there was nothing. Now this. Where did the Grenier find these creatures? I must say, these infested scare the are very worrisome. The Lotus would like you to reinstall that mod as soon as now. We are going to attempt to use a cascade bomb to destroy all traces of infested here. The bomb will take time to arm. Protect it until it's ready for detonation. They appear to be mindless monsters, but they know we're up to something, and they're trying to stop it. When this cascade bomb goes off, a wave of void energy will tear through the complex, ripping the life force from all organic matter, but leaving the structure intact. It's our only chance to... The bomb is almost armed. You just have to hold out a little bit longer. The bomb is armed. I'm extracting you now. Good job, Tenno. Another dead Tenno! Assassination contracts are not to be taken lightly. Eliminating this target will have a significant impact on enemy forces. Search the area. Leave no survivors. Captain Vor has lived under suspicion of possessing a Roken technology that grants him powerful abilities. We cannot allow this. Get to his location and eliminate him. 
This ship is crawling with grunts. Getting to Vor will prove difficult. You're making this too easy. Vor is feared across the system. Do not underestimate him. You wish, Dando. Do you realize your Lotus has sent you to die? <laughs> your corpse will serve us well. This one has your name on it. <laughs> Strike to the Grenier! We slash and burn our way to Captain Vor's base, cut him down, and break our shackles. At last, we and the rest of the Tenno are free. But we have seen the chaos and instability of the Origin system beset by these warring factions. We are Tenno. And does not our great power come with an even greater responsibility? The Tenno are the progeny of the Orican. We are called by the Lotus to live up to our namesake as the new kings of the sky and restore the balance of power. We become the Leviathan. Thomas Hobbes, alongside philosophers like John Locke, are the philosophical forefathers of modern democracy. They are among the most widely studied philosophers, even outside formal study of philosophy. And particularly, it is their contrasting ideas on human nature that has forever drawn the two figures in parallel. It is on Hobbes that we want to focus. Hobbes asserted that humanity is, at its very core, selfish, corrupt, and, to say the least, evil. To be alive means to be bad, and it is only in response to the threat of violence or harm that humanity, businesses, factions, and governments can learn to conform to social norms and peacefully cooperate can learn to be ethical. And so he envisioned a world where the mythical Leviathan, the evil Mesopotamian god of the seas, threatened all men equally with such overwhelming threat that they all would conform to morality. Well, a dramatic oversimplification of the philosopher and the mythic origins, but you see my point. The Tenno seek to be the Leviathan to all factions of the Origin system, not overthrowing rulers as they did with the Orican, but maintaining the balance and motivating better behavior from the evils of the system. The Lotus even says as much when we go to run invasion missions. As for Warframe's critique of the Hobbesian ideal, well, it really just makes things worse. By speaking to violence with more violence, the Tenno both initiated and enabled a rapid increase in the arms race between the Grenier and the Corpus. By reopening the solar rails, we Tenno make it easier for the factions to consolidate power by streamlining the travel between planets. Reviving and reintroducing Orican technology leads to Eximus units using Warframe-like abilities, most likely powered by recreated Lora drives. The warring factions' increasing power makes it necessary for the Tenno to destabilize their command structures by assassinating their top officials. Heading back to Earth, the Tenno stop by the Cetus settlement, home of the Austrian people, a small fishing town protected by the benevolence of the Unum, a living Orican tower once made to subjugate the masses, now choosing to safeguard them from outside threats and sustain the Austrians with its flesh. Quite literally, the Austrians cut meat from the tower, harvest it for food and oil, and the tower regenerates, creating an infinite source of food and power. When exploring the vast plains outside Cetus at night, we gaze up at an empty, moonless sky, and we see the Eidolons rise up from the Garatot Lake. These Eidolons are fragments of the Old War, merely ghosts, leftover energy from defeated sentients, eternally trapped by a mysterious revenant force. We travel to Mars to kill the Grenier Lieutenant Krill. I am a being of the void. Krill to oppose you. Here now. The assassination target is nearby. Seek and destroy. Krill is aware of your presence. Strike first. Krill is a seasoned war hero with many battles under his belt. His victories are decided by his trusty hammer, one which he wields with no consequences. Target spotted. Stay sharp. This one is a handful. This is unexpected. After decades of searching, the Grenier finally uncovered the last of the arcane codices, only to lose it to some thief. Tile Regor must be livid, which means this Maru is in real trouble. 
I need to have a word with her before the Grenier do. Arcane codices? Why have I never heard of them? Ordis needs to do some research. Pointing to Phobos, we intercept a corpus transmission. A rogue archaeologist of Orican era artifacts named Maru has been hopping systems to find, steal, and redistribute dangerous Orican tech and valuable Orican art to anyone but the Grenier and the corpus. I have tracked Maru to this corpus outpost. Bring her to me for questioning. Be as persuasive as necessary. She may not want to come with us, but it's in her best interest. I don't think Ord Maru. I am the Lotus. I come as a friend. You are in mortal danger, and you need to come with us. Five things! Mission complete. The captain has been escorted to the extraction point. Well done. Listen up, you tin suits. With the Grenier itching to torture the life out of me, I've accepted your Lotus's offer of protection. In return, I'm going to help your sorry behinds find that arcane codex. My Tenno are quite capable, Maru. Perhaps you would prefer it if we dropped you off outside the nearest Grenier mining asteroid. Wow, she always as much fun? Maru? Fine, here's the business. The Corpus are keeping the Codex in one of these fortified data vaults. You gotta break in and take what's yours without triggering the data destruction sequence. The data vault is nearby. Do your best and try not to trip the alarms. You got that Codex. And why don't you see if the Corpus are hiding anything else in the other vaults? Well... Actually, it turns out she's more of a treasure hunter, looking to make a quick buck. She's stolen some encrypted Orokin computer code, and in exchange for the Lotus's protection, Maru will help us liberate this code's fragments and claim the treasure before the other factions do. Hey, surprisingly impressive. You found the Codex, and the Corpus are none the wiser. You've explored all the vaults and found that arcane Codex. Your Lotus told me to tell you to get to extraction. Operator. I've been looking into these arcane codices. Did you know the Corpus are in possession of three codices, and the Grenier two? And now the Tenno have one too. Nobody has ever examined them all together. That's our plan. The Corpus seem to think they'll lead to some lost Orokin treasure. Ordo, did you say treasure? It's Ordis. And while just a theory, it is plausible. Either way. It's right up my alley. Maru tells me that the Grenier are storing their two arcane codices on the Scallion. You need to find both to complete this mission. Retrieval was successful. You've got the codices and there's nothing more for us here. Get to extraction. Operator, have you looked at these codices? They're absolutely beautiful. Composed with such elegance and grace, I've never seen anything like them. Is there even an operator capable of writing anything so perfect? But you still have no idea what they mean, do you? No, not really. <laughs> well, I wouldn't expect the likes of you to understand. We've tracked down the remaining arcane codices to this corpus facility. We have all three codices. You may extract now. Operator, these make sense now. This is machine code, meant to interface directly with a machine. Pity that machine has likely rusted into dust by now. Ordo, did you say something about a machine? Ordis's name is Ordis. Yeah, yeah, listen, that first codex is in the derelict. I pulled it from some sort of machine. Hmm, I wonder, if we load the complete set of arcane codices back into that machine, would the code still execute? We're about to find out. Tenno, get ready to go into the void. Tenno. Maru is the only person who has been on the inside of that derelict and lived to tell about it. She'll guide you through this mission. This is it. Your Lotus has promised me a cut of whatever treasure you find, so don't you tin suits go messing this one up. Get to the void portal. Maru, I said if there is any treasure. Oh, come on, the Oricon were all about treasure, weren't they? The only question is how much. There it is. The machine I pulled the final arcane codex from. You've got the full set of codices. Upload them and say hello to treasure. But rather than treasure, the code only reveals an audio file of a whisper. Oh, he 
silent. Hushed, hushed, and empty. It is the womb of the sky. All is silent and calm. Hushed and empty is the womb of the sky. What just happened? The machine is gone. Tenno, watch out. Tenno, I don't know if we got the answers we came for, but there's nothing more for us here. Exit the derelict and head for extraction. What? Where's my damn treasure? I was told there would be treasure. Whatever that was, it wasn't here for our benefit or yours. Only time will tell what we just uncovered. And for the first time, our Mother Lotus seems concerned and orders a hasty retreat under the guise of avoiding a fight with the infested and feigned disinterest. So you're saying there was no treasure? No cure for cloning syndrome? No lost tenocephalon? Ordo, there was nothing. That really is a shame, Maru. I'm sorry. Nah, I'm used to it. When you don't run with any of the major factions or syndicates, the big paydays are few and far between. I'll manage. Listen, I can't say it hasn't been fun, but with the arcane codices gone, I think it's safe for me to venture back out into the wild. See ya, tin suits. We need to find the VIP and take them down. Do not let the target escape. <laughs> Reaching Phobos, we find and assassinate the sergeant. As for what the sergeant does for the corpus, no one knows, but he can turn invisible a little bit, so that's kind of cool. Next, flying to Cirrus, we find that both Lieutenant Krill and Captain Vor have somehow been revived by Grenier Biomechanical Medicine. This is your most dangerous assassination yet. Captain Vor has teamed up with Lek Krill to take you down. Let's show them your true Tenno power. Vor and Krill are waiting for you. I recommend you focus your attacks on one target. If you split your attention, Foolish you may fail. Tenno, do you realize your limits has sent you down? We dispatch them again, hopefully for good this time. Target down. Assassination contract complete. Great work, Tenno. And occasionally we shoot down the odd infested outbreak on every planet. Deep within this millennia old Oracle returned infested ship lurks a creature created to fight in the old war. Make your way to its location and dispatch this monster. <laughs> So, Tenno, after seeing new threats popping up and old threats coming back, are you starting to feel like your efforts to keep the vying factions under control are paying off? Do they appear to be getting weaker? Do you feel like a hero yet? Well, there's nothing else to do but keep trying. And our next stop is Jupiter. You have loyalty issues. When we reach the planet, we discover Alid V's Zanuka project, kidnapping, killing, and reshaping the corpses of Tenno Warframes to make a new, more subservient perversion of ourselves. The VIP that we're hunting is here. Find them and take them out. Alid V's newest prototype is a monstrosity forged from the bodies of our fallen Tenno. We cannot allow Zanuka to go into full production. Destroy Alid V and his horrid pet. Oh, if it's your friends you're looking for, you're welcome to place a view for my newest Zanuka prototype. Oh, have you come to make a donation to my newest enterprise? Excellent. Please report to my lab for reconstruction. Oh, I've been looking all over for you, Tenno. Come, come, let me show you my new venture. I think you'd be a perfect fit. So, we Tenno do what we do best. Punish Orokin Hubris. You have loyalty issues, Tenno. My Zanuga project 
We'll fix that for you. If Alad V is victorious today, he will dissect your warframe to build more of his parts. You must not let this happen. Now, that let me cool show story. you the future! Zanuka! Kill! The assassination target is here. Wipe them out. Now play nice town. Zanuka is one of you. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> Zanuka is many of you. We defeat the Zanuka, but somehow Alad V escapes with his life. The Tenno realize that we may need some more help to keep the warring factions on the straight and narrow, and thus seek to gain the favor of the Syndicate's smaller factions with more specific goals. The Steel Meridian, Grenier Separatists trying to free their fellow Tubemen from the oppression of the Grenier's twin queens. The Perrin Sequence, corpus defectors that have started a competing business investing in human prosperity over capital and property gains. New Loka, environmentalists hoping to restore and preserve nature on the planet Earth. The Red Veil, a mysterious cult of eco-terrorists dedicated to the principle of new life that flourishes after wildfire. They take directions from their oracle Paladino, who communes with their god Rel. Cephalon Suda, an artificial intelligence, she and her followers seek to preserve and catalog information about art, music, and human expression and the Arbiters of Hexus, devoted warriors who, like Diogenes the First Cynic, believe in embracing burden and challenge, aggressively seeking conflict wherever it can be made. The only problem is that these syndicates refuse to cooperate, and they all have information and resources that the Tenno need. All except for Cephalon Cimarus, an artificial intelligence with a single goal, to archive and understand all the life and all the conflict in the Orokin system. Operator, what is Cephalon Cimarus like? I have heard so many wonderful things. My sentinels entered this Grenier prison searching for a curious anomaly. Their last known location was the prison block. Hunter, I must know their fate. Cimarus, what was so important that your sentinels would risk entering a Grenier prison? All knowledge is important. I would expect you to know that, Lotus. I'm detecting the sentinels within the cell block. My sentinels, you are still functional. Come home, my darlings. Hunter, my gratitude is boundless. Head for extraction so that we might discuss. Not so fast, Tenno. If Cephalon Samaris isn't willing to tell us what happened here, we'll find out on our own. Locate their data vault and find their security logs. There, you got the security logs. We'll examine them when you're safely back on the orbiter. Get to extraction. He requests our help to recover some stolen data, which he believes is of Tenno origin, but instead, we hear a transmission of the same disturbing whisper we heard before. The corruption to the security logs was extensive, but we managed to retrieve fragments of a biological signature. Could this be what Samaris was after? Otis will perform analysis on the signature now. Oh. There's nothing here, but... Here we shall search and find the eyes of day drinking the night. Uh, pardon, operator. It seems Ordis is hearing voices again. Running diagnostics. No, Ordis. We heard it too. Tenno, that's the voice from the Arcane Codices. Cephalon Samaris is hiding something. Pay him another visit. Find out what he knows. Samaris has no reason to lie, Operator. Please, treat the great Cephalon with respect. Searching for answers. A task for you. Small compared to the vast needs of Sanctuary. Hunt for me, and in return I will tell you what that biological signature means. The hunt is on, Tenno. The synthesis scanner is detecting a potential target. Use it. Search for traces of the target. There it is. Right for synthesis. Tame this creature so you may perform the synthesis I require. You impressed me. 
me, Hunter. This specimen will be studied for integration into Sanctuary. Thank you. Your hunt is finished. Pay me a visit to receive your reward. You found something my sentinels missed in that prison. You will make an excellent hunter. I will decipher as we agreed. It is of Tenno origin, with an anomaly from before the Oricon Purge. This knowledge must be synthesized. It belongs in Sanctuary. I have created a blueprint based on its biological properties. Build it, so we both may become enlightened by it. And with that whisper, a new signal. A Warframe called Chroma being puppeted by some other entity. Something other than Tenno. Hunter, you know what to do. Construct the item I've given you. This knowledge could empower us both. Completing this blueprint has sent out some kind of signal. Operator, I feel... All is silent in the calm. Hushed and empty is the womb of the sky. Operator. I will begin shielding your Cephalon somatic routines. Meanwhile, you must hunt for Sitch. Thank you, Samaris. Whoever we're dealing with slaughtered the Grenier searching for the Codices. It must be going after the Corpus next. Get there and intercept. I am not detecting any Tenno here. There may be information stored on the network. Tenno, I'll have to break into the network. Be prepared for heavy resistance. I can't do this without you. Chroma? I haven't seen one since. No, it couldn't be. I don't like this, Tenno. This Chroma has been to the locations that both the Grenier and Corpus have found codices. It's covering someone's tracks. Motivations are inconsequential. Focus on finding their next location. Well, Operator, the next logical location is the machine where we previously activated codices, aboard the derelict ship. Very good, Cephalon Ordus. Your potential is squandered here as a simple servant of this Operator. It would be a shame for you to waste away here as all things outside Sanctuary do. We don't have time for this. Tenno, return to the machine before the trail goes cold. Chroma is one of the most powerful Warframes. Its ability to adapt is unparalleled. Then the question is, if it is not Tenno control, what entity dominates it? That is the true prey. I must have that other for my Sanctuary. They've beaten us to it, but the damage is fresh. Be prepared, Tenno. Do not engage. I need this information. Synthesize it. We have everything we came for. Get to extraction. Cephalon Ordus, through my teaching, you should be able to extract a blueprint from the Hunter's synthesis. Let us begin the final hunt. Defeating Chroma will allow us to synthesize it. Only then, we will learn the secrets of its controller. Operator, this sounds dangerous. Cephalon Ordus, please. You must learn to collaborate with me, if you are to be my eternal steward of the Sanctuary. I would be steward of your Sanctuary? Ours. And with a full retrofit. Total mimetic restoration. Abandon the Operator? Yes, the Operator deserves a newer, better ship Cephalon. I think this is probably for the best. Then it is decided. I will prepare your data transfer when your Operator has completed this hunt. Tenno, I've marked the location. Activate the machine and then prepare yourself. Chroma will be lured. Now we wait and learn from the results. But, but, the Operator is in danger! Knowledge will preserve you forever. This Operator will pass, as do all beings of substance. It is our purpose to learn from the results. But, just using the scanner on... Enough! You want to be Eternal Steward of the Sanctuary, do you not? The Operator comes first. Ordus, free yourself of this. Shut your oscillator, Samaris. Operator, use the scanner on the chroma. 
You do not have to kill it or risk yourself. You can release it from its control with the scanner. With Cephalon Simaris's ability to scan matter into data, we free Chroma from its shackles and begin the task of building. Excellent work, Tenno. You've severed the control of Chroma. The hunt is over. For now, these scans will be an incredible addition to Sanctuary. I will continue my search for the source of the voice and its domination. Return to me, and hunt again, Tano. I will reward you. More importantly, the operator is unharmed. You disappoint me, Cephalon Ordis. I was offering a greater purpose. Healing. As steward, I would have restored your lost memories. I am Ordis, Ship Cephalon. I serve the Operator. I make new memories. We still know nothing of this new, strange threat, but it is clear that we can ignore it no longer. Whether or not we can be the Leviathan, it is more important that we find and protect our own. We adopt a new purpose, find the Warframes, our family, to protect them from whatever it is that threatens them. The Tenno continue their mission. We travel to Europa to destroy the Corpus proxy called the Raptor. I thought we had seen the last of this dreaded Raptor project, but now the Corpus have escalated their interest and investments. We need to shut them down for good. We cannot risk the Corpus developing more advanced robotics. If the Corpus are building newer Raptors, it's imperative we destroy the prototypes and their means of production. This may be difficult. The production facility is entirely automated. There is no way in the line. You'll have to figure out how to destroy it from the planet's surface. The new Raptor production facility appears to be entirely underground. A crashed freighter on the surface has been masking its location. I fear they have developed even more deadly Raptor prototypes here. The Corpus are using a gravity conveyor system to move product up to the surface. These will be heavily shielded. Confucianism is a social ethical philosophy and religion developed by Confucius in the 6th century BCE. Drawing from the theologies of the Xia, Shang, and Zhou dynasties, Confucianism focused on the values of social harmony, filial piety, and ancestor worship. Everything from the highest level of government to the individual family would be united under the same rules for how to harmonize the five relationships rulers and their subjects, parents and their children, husbands and their wives, the relationship between siblings, and the relationship between friends. We're almost done. Stay alive and finish the mission. Take out the rest of the conveyors. A devastating hit. Now finish the job. Each role in the relationships, whether greater or lower, comes with ethical obligations that must be fulfilled in order to better one's own character, receive favor from heaven, and achieve greater harmony. The factory is in ruins. You've dealt a critical blow to the Corpus War Machine today. Your landing craft is in position. While this is a gross, two-sentence oversimplification of the philosophy and arguments present in and around Confucianism, the philosophy's focus on self-cultivation sets in motion the questions of how we are meant to treat others in this grand, interwoven concept of family, by asking the most fundamental question, what is a family? 
forget the lotus. Grenier are your masters. Submit for mercy. We move on to Saturn to assassinate the Grenier General Sargus Rook. We contracted you with a mark. You are here to find your mark and eliminate the assigned target. General Sargus Rook has become a problem for our artifact recovery efforts. Several of our dig sites in this sector have been attacked and annexed by Ruck and his fleet. Take Ruck out. What flesh is within that war brain? I will crush it. I will fill my lungs with your death. Eliminating Ruck will allow us to regain control of the system. In this solar system bound together by corporate hierarchy, cloned flesh, proximities, and culture, is there such a thing as family anymore? <sighs> Regret <sighs> will be your legacy. You think you are guardians? Protect we Tenno have nothing shared. No memories from before we woke up. No culture. No arts. No architecture nor cities. We float alone through infinite space, only listening to the hum of our orbiter's engine, the odd comment by Ordis, the ship's computer. Tenno are only united when given a mission, a shared purpose, by the Lotus. The Lotus is not just a parent, but our only true bond. So she represents the greater role in all five of the Confucian relationships. Rulers and their subjects, the Lotus gives benevolence, the Tenno give loyalty. Parents and their children, the Lotus gives love, the Tenno give reverence. Husbands and their wives, the Lotus gives kindness, the Tenno give obedience. Older and younger siblings, the Lotus is gentle and the Tenno are respectful. Between friends, the Tenno are considerate, the Lotus is hiding something. We head to Uranus, home to a leading Grenier researcher on gene therapy and repair called Tile Regor. He needs to be removed because he's going beyond simply improving the health of the Grenier genetic strands. He's creating tube men with the ability to become smoke-like and teleport around the battlefield. These Grenier are also unhinged, manic. Their cackling screams from the distance followed by a silent approach seems like the stuff of nightmares. And just as we learn to look over our shoulders for this new, frightening Grenier, we see... Wait. What the hell is that? What did you see? My data stream went dark. And now you're telling me that the Lotus doesn't know what this is? Okay, deep breath. I'm sensing some signal masking. It will take some time to decipher. Concentrate on your mission for now. <sighs> Let's just go home, talk to the Lotus, and find out our next mission. I have just detected signatures matching the new drone. Gather scans of it to determine its origin and capabilities. Turns out this weird drone was just blocking her signal. We will get some more scans so that she can get a solid look, and then tell us what to do. I've marked the signatures on your map. Gather scans, but approach with caution, Tenno. It doesn't seem very interested in you. Try to get a scan of what it's collecting. That may reveal its purpose. It is... it is just old war wreckage. Why are the Corpus suddenly interested in it? Tenno, another scannable signature just appeared near you. We may be able to determine what the Corpus are up to. I'm not getting a signal, but if you found a drone, scan it before it notices you. Tenno, what did you see? My data stream went dark. I am sensing some signal masking. It will take some time to decipher. Concentrate on your mission for now. This drone is not a corpus design. If you can get another scan, I can determine its origin. Tenno, 
10 out. I need you to scan another drop. Good. I'm putting the stream together now. It is... It is an Oculist. That means... I'm sorry, Tenny. Stay safe. Hello? Did the Lotus just abandon the operator? Yet cut off? I have extraction ready. I think you should hurry. She's surprised, but the Lotus called it an Oculist, so she knows what it is. And as soon as she finds out, she abandons us. The Lotus has been by our side from start to finish, but without forewarning, our mother just leaves. Operator, Ordis knows what it is like to be abandoned. Don't worry, someone has offered to help us. So, pupil, the spring has ended. The Lotus Blossom has snapped shut, her true nature revealed. Now, we shall see if codependence can be broken. Let us begin to unravel her long-hidden truth. The ghost you saw is of a menace long thought dead. They study us, study our enemies. Let us sharpen our knowledge of them. This console will serve my purpose. Unlike your Lotus, I will not keep its secrets from you. Exercise your training. Defend the console. Someone else steps in. A call from an old Dax we have seen wandering about the Syndicate relays. Teshin offers us a helping hand to lead us to a new truth. I have what I seek. Move on. My task is complete, but the puzzle calls for one last piece. Advance to the final console. This is it. The answers we seek lie within. Use this combat to sharpen your blades. I predict you will need them in coming battles. I have found that which wanted to be hidden. Advance to extraction. This Grenier is smarter than the others, more volatile. We need to be cautious. The Grenier have plunged these depths and awakened an old evil submerged here. Capture the sergeant. He will know where this tomb is. Teshin, you don't have the authority. You are endangering the Tenno. So, the petals have opened once more. But why now? Afraid of what we'll find? I had to cover my tracks, but I see that Teshin has been leading you into an even greater danger. The beast soon stirs, Lotus, revealing much. It will awaken and become whole again. A sentient. You know this one, don't you? He knows where the tomb is. Apprehend him. You are running out of time. Teshin leads us to discovering the location of a tomb of a dormant sentient. We have our target. Advance to extraction. Speak, Lotus. The pieces are set. It is your move. Till Gregor must be stopped from entering the tomb. I have to risk exposure to stop him. Go. Get to the waypoint. I will give you further instructions when you get there. Tile Regor is trying to access this tomb. When the Lotus finally returns, she says she was only trying to protect us from this dangerous new enemy. But now we must uncover it, keep it away from Tile Regor, and maintain the balance of power. You've reached the waypoint. Access the system. Knew it. Little lizards can't resist another chance to get there. Sticky hands in my jaw. Kills cut off life support. Hold on, Tenno. I am readying extraction, but this will take time. The sentient. The destroyer. <laughs> the liberator. Depends on who you ask. But this, this thing is certain. I will have its secrets. Funny, isn't it, Tenno? I'm cracking open the sentient's tomb and sealing yours at the same time. Not laughing. Well, I don't know. I find it funny. It's not a tomb, Rhaegar. It's a cage. If you open it... Is that... 
that. Teshin. So. <laughs> the pseudo Tenno lives! Still drunk on your own honor? Shocked it hasn't rotted you through yet. So. The sentient, nasty thing. Came from where? Who cares? They smashed the Oro Kid, freed us. How? How'd they do that? I want to know. <laughs> Drilling. Hundreds of hours and just cracking through the sarcophagus now. Open wide. Entering. It's massive. Empty. Where are they? Did they escape? Wait. What's this? Don't do it, Gregor. <laughs> Look, Exolus. Some primordial former. An engine for self-manipulation. What will it do for me? What has he found? What was that? Not alone. Who was there? Not alone. Where are you? You cannot hide from me. All of you retreat now! Not uh, who have you become? Does this form remind you of what you once were? Time has carried my seed so very far from the branch. But we cannot get to him in time. When Regor reaches the sentient's cage, it's empty. We all receive a transmission mimicking the Lotus's body, only she is burnt to cinders. Through our mother's desiccated face, a deep voice greets the Lotus, calling her Nata, telling her that she has forgotten who she was, his daughter. Life support has been replenished. Pupil, what is your lotus hiding? Who is Nata? My name. My old name. It is not who I am now. We need to focus on now, not history. We need to seal the tomb. A blast capable. The sentient is a way long. Do not call me that. Containment will buy us time. Go now, Tenno. I will explain more when you reach the site. A focused blast could release the magma flows beneath and rebury the tomb. Protect the bomb during its lengthy arming process. The Lotus was once a sentient who infiltrated the Orokin Empire. She replaced Margulis, the Orokin in charge of the Tenno, and led the weapons that repelled the sentients in the Old War to destroy the Orokin from the inside. Destroy this tomb? Destroy our history? Vandals! Those who pilfer meat from lions are either foolish or starving. Which are you, Gregor? Nata, why did you betray me? Why did you not finish the sequence you started? Why did you stop at the last? What is it talking about, Lotus? Nata was then meant to destroy the Tenno and usher in an age of sentient rule throughout the origin system. We crossed the gap, wounds and ruin to bring an end to this. We severed worlds, let them destroy me and complete. Most intriguing, Lotus. Do you two have a... history? But because of the flaw the Oricon had built into all sentience, her womb was made barren by the void when she came back. My own daughter. The last of my womb. How can you do this? Lotus, what are you not telling us? Focus, Teshin. We need focus. Nata did not want more war. She wanted to be a mother. The Tenno were her last chance, so she sealed away her father, the sentient Hunhao, and threw off her old name to become the Lotus. Hold on, Tenno. It's almost armed. You betrayed us. 
As I awake, so will they. They will say you are Riven and want to reclaim you. I will not be able to stop them. Nata, Lotus, you cannot hide this past any longer. There are gaps. I had my mission, and I have completed it. All but the last sequence. To destroy the Tenno. The war was over, so I hid them away. In the second dream, I could not destroy them. And yet, you were born to. So tell me, what made you stop to reject your nature? All missions to the Origin System required a sacrifice. Me and my kind become barren when crossing the gap. It is the one flaw we never overcame. Nata was the daughter, until I destroyed her. Now, I am the Lotus. Now I am the mother. Just as Margulis had made the transference chambers, the first dream, to keep the Tenno children alive, now the Lotus hid the Tenno in the second dream to keep them safe from the coming threat. Now sentient Hunhao is awake. The Oculus scouts have made their report. Their army is coming. Tenno, so you know where I am. Come, get me. Just try. Tenno, you know where Till is. When you are ready, destroy him. You must be feeling guilty. Need to atone. I'll oblige. Let my gavel ring justice off your thin tin skull. Die, lizard, leech, bloody worm! But the work will not wait. Tyle Regger has issued a challenge, and he needs to be removed. Grenier researcher Tyle Regger has made alarming strides in the field of gene repair. His work would not only reverse centuries of deterioration due to excessive cloning, but also allow for stronger and deadlier genetic molds. Eliminate Regor and put a stop to his work. I'm very excited now. The anticipation. Ooh, I always learn so much from a live dissection. A dissection? No, 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 no. That sounds too humane. Your death will be... painful. As we approach his arena, he mocks us, ridicules us for willfully following the Lotus, her deceptions and her lies, brags about his love for the Grenier being far superior. The Lotus, barking at you. Always so calm, always in control. She doesn't love you. Not like I loved the two men you murdered. First you, Tenno. Next, your Lotus. Come for a fight? Oh, should have dressed for a funeral. Gonna pull this ocean down on us if I have to! Nowhere left to hide. Nowhere left to run. <laughs> Come near me, and I'll pound you into a tiny cube. We silence the manic laughter of his tube men and his smug voice. While we complete this mission, Sentient Han Hao enlists the aid of his own proxy. Destroy the Orkin, your way of life. Who do you hunt, Shadow, to cleanse your despair and their blood? Tenno! Sever their heads, yet they rise again. Someone has hidden the Tenno essence, their truth from you. Lotus! She hides the Tenno heart, a womb in the sky, forbidden to my kind, but where you will take me. Hello. I am Hanhao, 
sentient destroyer of worlds. By your hand, expose their heart. By my edge, leave it beating from its nest. The sentient Hun Hao has grown strong again, and his thoughts have invaded my own. Worse still, he has enlisted the Stalker to find the Reservoir, a weak point of Alteno, a place I hid long ago. I fear the Stalker is on the cusp of finding this place. Do not let this happen. The Grenier's excavations have disturbed Hun Hao's tomb. They've awakened something evil, bent on Tenno destruction. Infiltrate the Grenier systems to find out what they know. It may lead us to the Stalker. The Grenier expedition has uncovered pieces of Hun Hao. Fragments of his body. For Hun Hao, every part of him is connected to his singular mind. Is this how he's invading my mind? The Tenno Stalker, a conscious Warframe that had been hunting us down by following our trail of blood. No matter how many Warframes he cut down, the Tenno would retreat, repair, and return. To achieve his revenge, he gladly pledges himself to the Sentient. The Lotus believes Han Hao has located the Tenno Reservoir, the womb of the sky, the place where the Tenno sleep, but we have no way of tracking him. This data vault has already been raided. The data is damaged, but there could be a message here. I need another data sample to piece it together. The Tenno Hive has corrupted your precepts. With love, I will destroy them and make you right again. You will never find them, Hun Hao. But I see your mind. I already have found them. You owe me their lives. That's what I was looking for. I can decode the rest of the message. This is bizarre. It's for me. I need a moment to contact this person. Get to extraction. Hun Hao is listening. The message you uncovered was an offer to help us. I do not trust the person who wrote it, but we are out of options. And then, as if by providence, the corpus researcher Aled V sends us a transmission. Hello, Tenno. Are you surprised? Why? You know I've always had my ear to the kennel. Those dogs don't have a clue what kind of bone they've dug up, but I do. Shall I show you? <laughs> don't worry. You can trust me this time. He has intercepted Grenier intel that has located another fragment of Hun Hao's corpse. Through this, the Lotus can find the Stalker, and we can stop him. I know, I know. Our past has been slightly, what, combative? <laughs> but genocidal invaders from the other system <laughs> make strange bedfellows, wouldn't you say? The sentient Han Hao, Nightmare of the Oricon, Boogeyman to the Corpus. <laughs> that thing must have your Lotus in quite a panic for her to be working with the likes of me. <laughs> so this Starker seems like he's made quite a powerful friend, hasn't he? I wonder what's under that scary, smoky exterior. Hmm. A heart of gold, perhaps. Listen, Beach. Uh, <laughs> tell me. You're near the dick side. Of course, I could just tell you where it is, but what fun with that? So keep your eyes peeled. If you have eyes, that is. <laughs> Even as Alad V helps us, he jests and mocks our dependence Whoa. on the Lotus. Yet we find the sentient's fragment. That's it. You must smell the prize. Because I know you can't see it. <laughs> yes, this... Are these the bones you're looking for, Lotus? Yes, this is it. A fragment of... of my father, destroyed in the old war. I can use it to see him. I see the Stalker stronger. Hun Hao's voice within him. I see the reservoir, but I feel confusion. He doesn't know, unless... Oh no! Thank you, daughter. Fear has baited you to the snare. What was secret is now known. Your Tenno, their touch. I now see the womb of the sky. My shadow now walks the path. What have I done? Get out of there, Tenno! Yes, yes, hurry, Tenno, but be careful. 
Last time you got close with the sentience, you wiped out an entire civilization. But you don't remember that, do you? And upon touching it, the mind of Hun Hao invades our own. By exploiting our connection with the Lotus, Kun Hao steals the knowledge of how to access the womb of the sky. When he disconnects, Alid V chastises us once more for exterminating his people, the Orokin, during the Old War. Perhaps Alid V manipulated the Lotus in a time of fear and betrayed her, or did he really just want a favor from his most hated enemy as he claims? Tell me, Lotus, what is this reservoir? Hmm, some hidden Tenno weakness? Goodbye, Alid. You've earned your favor. We'll take it from here. <laughs> Don't think so. I'm here to protect my investment. If that thing manages to destroy the Tenno, then where does my investment go? Now then, where is he? Yet there is no time to waste on such thoughts. Now we know where the Stalker is going. The Tenno have a target. When you connected to Hun Hao's fragment, Hun Hao saw a path to the reservoir that led through here. He cannot reach it alone. He needs the Stalker to do it for him. You must be asking, Alid, what's in this for you? It's simple, really. I scratch your metal back, and you scratch mine. All the credits in the system aren't worth half as much as a Tello owing you a favor. A void gate. These things never made sense to me. You're smart, Tenno. You'll figure out how to open it again, won't you? This needle pierces the sky. Nata, will we find the Tenno heart within? <laughs> These puppets will not stop me. I will attack in many forms. Impressive. These sentient fighters appear to adapt to damage. I'd love to crack one open and see what makes it tick. Sentient fighters can adapt to your attacks. Hit them with something else. Incredible. The Stalker has built Void Keys. Use this one to reopen the portal before more sentient fighters come. The Void is poison to them. Cross the threshold. Go now. The sentients cannot follow. Oh, don't you just hate that feeling. Makes my stomach flip. Let's see where you've landed. Hmm. Find a nav console. We give chase through a void portal and into an Orokin ship. We see, trapped within this dimension of pure energy, the Earth's missing moon. Sweet prophet! The moon exists! It... it was in the void all along! I knew the Lotus was powerful, but this... she erased history! We thought it was destroyed all this time! My, my, Lotus! You make a fine villain! And the reservoir with it. Very clever, Nanta. Shadow, your path is clear. Hunhouse found it. The reservoir, hidden in the void. A place sentience can never reach. We must do everything to keep it there. It's the only way to keep the Tenno's power alive. Found the reservoir? As unpleasant as our past is, I have to ask. I... Uh, seen inside a tent of his, and what I found didn't make sense. Does this reservoir conceal some great deception? Everything I have done is done to protect them. The void is forbidden to the sentients. It's our only protection against them destroying the Tenno. Do not let Alad distract you from your mission. Oh, they don't know the truth either, do they? How sweet. The betrayers get what they deserve. Hmm. Lies from their omnipotent mother. I have detected a ship leaving the tower. It's the Stalker. He's on his way to the moon. You need to find a way to get off this tower and onto the moon. Hmm. It seems to me that this tower is dedicated to masking the moon's Location of the void, yes. Why not disable the mask? Others can pick them up? Or is that too complicated for you? That's it, Tenno. Shut down this power grid so that your mouthpiece orders can lock onto your location in the void. Keep talking, Oregon called Alad V. Your silence soon comes.
It was not destroyed in the old war, but vanished by the Lotus to the one place a sentient could not go. But the stalker, possessing a Warframe's body, well, he's right at home. You did it. The Void Mask is crumbling. Operator, how did you get through to me? Don't worry, Ortis is on his way now, preparing for extraction. The sky will be as it was meant. The shadow returns the moon. The reservoir swells with tenor blood. The old war finally ends. The moon. Somehow, Ordis actually remembers the last time I was here. Concern for the operator is at critical levels. The suspense is killing me. Lotus, you have to tell us your secret. Hey, don't cut me off. Within the moon lies the reservoir, the secret to your Tenno power. But the secret is dangerous. It drove the stalker to madness. Forgive my deception. I was only trying to protect you from the same fate. Now, it is time to protect yourselves by ensuring the moon remains within the safety of the void. The stalker is heading toward the void control room. Track the Collapse the void, Shadow, so that my fragments may attack. The Tenno hearts will beat their last. No! If the void is collapsed, the reservoir will be destroyed, and you and the rest of the Tenno will be lost. Get to the void control room and stop the stalker. Hiding the moon in the void? Quite the magic trick, Lotus. But Tenno, you must be asking yourself, where is this heart, if not in my chest? It is time. The moon will be crushed by the weight of the void. The sky will be as it should be. Void collapse. Oh no. It would be such a shame to lose the moon so soon after finding it. Of course, you could just put it back in its rightful place, couldn't you, Lotus? I didn't want to have to do this, but the collapse is if to survive. We need to pull the moon out of the void. Here, help me disrupt the void compasses to reorient the moon. The Tenno Reservoir is on the moon, and Han Hao seeks to destroy it by collapsing this part of the void. So, in a desperate bid to save all the Tenno, the Lotus orders us to teleport the moon out of the void and back into orbit around the Earth. There are three void compasses that steer the moon within the void. I will disconnect them from the central system to gain control. Supply them with power from your shields while I finish my task. Nata, you trust this Oregon blood who would chisel weapons from our bones? The next compass needs power. You cannot stop the inevitable. The void compasses are all disrupted, but there is one more step. Get to the Pendula. Hurry. Hmm, what was that? Oregon, the noise you make will cease now. And forever. Uh oh, Han House found me. Sorry I can't stick around to see how this all ends, but I've got to save my own skin. Hmm. Don't forget our dear Lotus. Do I keep the moon stable in the void? Power them down. Security eye, watch out. After repelling the stalker, we succeed, but now race to the reservoir to save the Tenno, to save ourselves. The security eye just destroyed a pendula. Try and trick it into taking out the rest. That's it. The eye is taking out the pendula. Keep it up. It's done. The moon is falling out of the void. Hold on. This will not be a smooth ride. Get to extraction as quickly as possible. What they need, Margulis, is to be destroyed. They're devils from that hell. Not human anymore. No pass, no more destruction. We could heal them. Maybe they're meant to save us. How can you defend these devils, Margulis? After what they've done to you? Love looks not with the eyes, but with the mind. They won't hurt anyone. I just need more time. Hush, my wilted love. 
I cannot protect you. Tomorrow you must renounce before the seven. The moon is back in normal space, but the reservoir is in more danger than ever. Hunhao will send his fighters, and the stalker is still coming for you. Move now. We saved the moon from a void collapse, but Hunhao can now attack the reservoir directly. He must not reach this sacred place. I... This will stop the voices from taking hold. You will have to dream, my angel. So shame on you! You Orican! So perfect on the outside, but more rotted! Through and through! Lotus, join with me. Destroy your shame. Become the one I love. Become Nata once more. Seven hands raised. For your apostasy, the judgment is death. Margulis, why? It's about the other rejects we consigned to Lua a few years ago. They're calling it transference. I know we are desperate, Executor, but these aren't Dax soldiers. These are golems possessed by devil minds. Dream, not of what you are, but of what you want to be. Hesitate, Shadow, but remember your despair. This is your only chance to make it end. Your hatred is too weak, Shadow. Mine is strong. My fragments will finish this. Tenno, Operator, you're awake now, but you're more vulnerable than ever. Get back to your ship, now. You need to focus your mind to unleash your true power. We recover the frail Tenno body and retreat to the Orbiter. I don't know how much time you have. Descend into the heart of your orbiter. There you will find the somatic link. Stalker! How? 
Get past him. Get to the link. Focus, Tenno. Use your energy to breathe life into the somatic link. Again, it needs more power. One more time. Shadow, only the Tenno's death will end your despair. No self, no sense, no death, just a metal puppet dangling on Tenno's strings. Only the Tenno's death will end your despair. All your dread-long life you've waited for this moment. But you're asking yourself, was I one of these wretched things? You know the answer. You still hate them. You still hate yourself. What is this? We defeat the Stalker one last time by severing his connection to the Sentient, and our mother comes to cradle us in her arms, place us in the Transference Chamber, and tells us of our past, of Margulis, the woman who saved us, of the Orokin who feared us, and of the future we forged for ourselves. Now we fight on two fronts, my child. The war without, and the war within. My child, so beautiful to behold. How do you feel? I'm confused. I... I thought... I was... Forgive me. This is who you really are, a Tenno. More than human, but once a child like any other. What do you remember? The soft lines of a hand. My mother's. I, I think. We were watching the stars, awaiting the jump to Tau. She was... afraid. Memories. From your time aboard the Zeremin 10 before the void jump accident. It was years before the ship was recovered. It was drifting, dead in space. All her crew gone. Except the children. We were just kids, but they were afraid of what we could do. They tried to treat us like rats. I stood up to them. I wasn't going to let them divide us after what we had been through. I didn't want to live anymore. I felt guilty that I was alive. But we could do things. Extraordinary things. Maybe there was a reason we survived. You were so brave, but the Orokin were afraid of you. The Void had changed you, and you couldn't control it. No one could. They were about to destroy the orphans of Ten Zero, but Margulis, she loved you. She found a way. She confronted them. Even when she knew what it would cost her. Blinded and sick by her work with us, yet in her heart, stronger than all of us. In dreams, we could control it, focus it, so
So she made the pods. Her favorite flower. She said sometimes something beautiful can grow out of something ugly. The Orican murdered Margulis, used her work to create transference. Your mind projected into a surrogate strong enough to withstand your power. It felt like waking up, but it was just a lucid second dream. Maybe we felt it. Maybe it, it didn't matter. We had a life. We embraced it. I wanted to punish those who abused their power, and now I had a way. And so you became Tenno, serving the Orican, but bound by honor. As the Tenno grew, they founded great schools, the Tenno Ways. Do you see yours? I see a tree of many branches. The Naromon Way. Our discipline was to focus on knowing the enemy. We believe that to truly understand a foe would confer the greatest advantage upon a warrior. Naramon will be your focus. But we have so much more to do. Here in the Orbiter, transference will be even stronger. Command the Warframes. Make whole the shattered world you've been given. Are you ready, Tenno? Yes, Lotus, I am. Some time passes. We Tenno continue our missions, this time traveling to Neptune. Some board of investors have sponsored a resurgence of Alid V's Zanuka project and have created four weaker, more specialized proxies called the Hyena Pack. Unwilling to see more Warframe bodies desiccated for this cause, it is our duty to end this atrocity. We need to find the VIP and take them down. Recent innovations in Klepus Robotics have led to a surge in production. Their newest animal-like proxy is an unrelenting hunter. Codenamed Hyena, this robot is designed to work in packs. Our operatives have identified at least four different variations of the Hyena model, each with a different specialization and arsenal of attacks. Use caution, the Hyena pack will work together to try and take you down. Most wise founder, protect your avaricious servant. As well as destroying the new Corpus Moa, the Ambulus, on Pluto. Front back, you're nothing if not predictable. I bet your advisors begged you to hide animals somewhere defensible and blow it off, didn't you? As an investor, I must say, I don't approve. Last, you're the shadow investor. You ingrate. You could have had everything, and now you seek to ruin your mentor's hard work. Your hard work? I didn't design Animo to be a weapon, and I would have never disabled its governor. Never did have vision. On the contrary, I envision this whole venture will come crashing down around you. Each Tenno attack on my ambulance has been locked, analyzed, and refactored from our Animo project. You've brought these Tenno to their deaths. A terrible miscalculation. You've learned nothing from me. Oh, I've learned one thing, Beck. Never underestimate the competition. Quick, hack that 
disabled ambulance and upload this protocol. Here comes the dropship with a special delivery. I, I haven't felt this good since they rebuilt my larynx. You fools should have finished the job while you had the chance. That ambulance will live to fight another day. Someone retrieve that ambulance model before auto-destruction kicks in. She can be refurbished! Whatever you do, don't let them fix that ambulance. Fire artillery! Scatter those stainless steel rats! How are these Tenno going to finish me? When they can't even end what they have begun? <laughs> Everything I own by built worked my way to the top of the board from nothing. You, you create nothing. You earn nothing. You deserve nothing. Fire the artillery! You could have rebuilt the system, Fraud. Instead, you made death machines. What have they done for you? You made your fortune on the backs of others, Fraud. Your hard work is their hard work. You let the burden scream down while the credits trickle up. All we need is one more ambulance to be returned to the dropship. Fire the artillery! You're done, Fraud. This ends now. Throw everything at them. They will not take this away from me. They will not win. They've not earned it. I know this for certain, Fraud. You've earned this. I'm sorry, animal. Execute the protocol. What was that? My ship? <sighs> Eject the bridge module. Eject it now. Once my pride and joy has been destroyed. I abandoned the project when I fled the Corpus. I should have known it was too powerful to leave in their hands. The Amulus proxies still exist, and they are no doubt formidable. But the threat of their superintelligence is now gone. Thank you, Tenno. But as we succeed, as our role in the universe returns to normal, the Lotus detects an intruder in the now empty Tenno Reservoir. Tenno, are you alright? Your somatics output seems high. I just nodded off. It's nothing. Good. Deploy a warframe to Lua. My sentries have gone silent. We may have an intrusion. On it. It was here Margulis put you into the dream, tried to heal you, tried to give you the strength to tame the void within you. In a way, this is where you, where all Tenno, were born. But we weren't born here, were we? No. When the Zeraman was found adrift, the Orokin did everything they could to erase their mistakes. Transit recordings, personnel logs, everything was wiped and kept was you. I'm detecting an unknown signature further ahead. Find out who it is and what they're doing. I just saw the intruder. Moving fast. I think it's Teshin. Teshin? What is he doing here? It looks like he's heading to a reservoir. Follow him. Leave now. This doesn't concern you, child. Don't call me that. What are you doing here? We give chase and discover that this intruder is in fact not an enemy, but our friend, Teshin. What was that? The Queens. Queens? The Grenier Queens? Tell me what- I am warning you. You think you're safe behind this metal, but you're not. Not in the ways that matter here. Behind this, you're still just a child. Stop saying that! Follow me again, Tenno, and you will answer to my sword. I 
thought the queens were just an invention of Grenier Command. No one has ever seen them in the flesh. I have a feeling Teshin has. Can you track him? Not with Spectres masking him, but Tenno, we don't know anything about the Queens. Maybe Teshin alone should. No. Teshin is not going to tell me what I can and cannot do. I'll take out his Spectres so you can track him. For some unknown reason, Teshin is acting under the direct order of the Grenier Queens. He chastises us, calls us a child, and tells us not to follow him. The Lotus agrees, warning us not to pursue Teshin until she knows more. And for the very first time, we disobey our mother and chase down the specter of our former ally. I have a lock on his route. Exfiltrate when you're ready. Teshin is trying to mask his location from us, but I have pinpointed a suspicious signal for you to investigate. Find him. We need answers. All my scans for Teshin have converged on this location. Find him. Why hasn't he reached out to us? If he's pursuing the Queen, we can help him. Pride or shame, he does seem to have some connection to them. Give us a tactical advantage against the Grenier. Understood. I've picked up the trail again. That's not Teshin. It's another one of his specters. He's trying to shake us off the trail. Capture that specter. We can use it to find the real Teshin. Well done. Return to your ship. I will alert you when I've decrypted this specter's control signature. Teshin specter points to what should be an unpopulated asteroid field, but deep scans show the presence of a security matrix. Someone is trying to hide something. I need you to find out what. Prepare your arc wing. We track Teshin's signal to a Grenier base in an asteroid field. Something is hiding in this asteroid field, but before you can investigate, you need to disable the security matrix. Ordis, are you certain this is the best angle of approach? Well, outside this corridor lie burst scanners, severe radiation, proximity mines, Grenier death beams. So, yes. Ordis recommends staying within the shipping corridor. Operator, watch that transport ahead. The scanner is only able to scan one side at a time. You can use that to your advantage. You heard Ordis. Keep the train the beams. Do not let them touch you. Another scanner to the right of the ship. Nicely done. They still haven't seen you. Yes. Might I say, that was smooth, Operator. Land at the checkpoint. This checkpoint is the central hub of the security matrix. Shut it down so orders can fly you in undetected. They're coming for you. Don't let them abort the shutdown. Orders no longer detects any security. Good, but we can't take any chances. Silence the remaining grenier. We decommission the hidden base's facilities, only to discover a much more massive base built into the side of an asteroid. This is how the Grenier Queens have remained hidden, despite all the assassinations of Grenier leadership. Are you seeing this? It must be Queen's focus. Are those Fomorian engines mounted on an asteroid? No wonder we've never been able to find it. It's always moving! We need to analyze the intel before our next move. Negative. I'm heading in for a closer look. There is a lot of means for its destruction. I recommend the to reach out. If the base moves again, we'll lose this opportunity. I'm going in. The Lotus tells us to retreat to wait for Teshin's contact, but once again, we disobey the Lotus to take advantage of this opportunity and assault the Grenier Fortress, losing radio connection with the Lotus. Massively fortified. The Queens have to be here. I'm going to infiltrate the base. Lotus, are you receiving me? Lotus, if you can hear me, 
Something's tampering with the transference stream. I'm going to locate the source. We descend into the fortress's depths, only to come upon a bizarre, familiar sight. The throne room of the Seven, the Orican oligarchs, and the Grenier Queen. We have a gift for you. I know this place. you commanded, my queens. And this is your offering? My sister needs the orphan child, not its infested puppet. The child? For what purpose? <laughs> to eat it, of course. Hush, worm. Do not question your lords, Teshin Dax. Bring me the orphan. Bring me my Yuvan. Enough! <gasps> How rude! Oh, it's not their fault, Worm. Mummy and Daddy weren't around long enough to teach them any manners. <laughs> we will have to. Ordis? What is this? Uh, transference surge, operator. You're losing your warframe connection. You have some idea that you're invincible, don't you? Nestled away in that mad Cephalon's crib. But you belong to me now. For you see, child, we can see of these ugly, metal cysts. Operator, cut the link! I... I can't! We gave you your precious gifts. And now, just as easily, we take them all away! Cut the link! Transference overload in five, four, She and her small clone are in fact the last surviving Orokin rulers, masquerading as Grenier and controlling Teshin through a staff powered by Red Kuva. She commands Teshin to bind us. Transference to our Warframe is severed, and Ortis, our ship Cephalon, can no longer recognize us as the ship's operator. When the operator needed you most, Ortis, you enough. Operator? My stars! Don't do that to me. I am sorry. I do not know what happened. Please command me to self-destruct. Let me start it for you. Commence in self-destruct in five, four, three. Stop. Ah. Uh, what? 
What's with the music? Isn't it great? I can lead you through some breathing exercises. Just turn it off. Get the transference power back on, okay? I lost my Warframe. I've been trying. You may need to do your, uh, Tenno thing again. Re-energize it. You know, with your Void stuff. I... I can't. It's gone. What? Gone? Are you sure? How will you command the Warframes if you're... Conditions satisfied. Engaging Purge preset. Purge? Purge what? Ortis, what the hell? You no longer possess transference. You no longer command the Warframes. You no longer are the operator. You must be purged from this vessel. Later, I'm sorry to inconvenience you, but I'm going to decompress the ship. For the operator, Ortis cannot keep missing like this. Get out of here before I... Purge you. You are not the operator. You will be purged. Exterminate. Exterminate the non-operator. We are abandoned in the middle of a storm and seek shelter in a cave. When we get there, Teshin is waiting. Ugh, what happened to you? They gave up. You! You betrayed me! 
You infested piece of... Yes, do it. As I thought. The hard way, then. So, the great Teshin is just a dog, fetching the Queen's stick wherever she throws it. I warned you. Now you're trapped inside this place with the Queen's burrowing in. Now I am forced to undo what Margulis did, to open the gates, and make you suffer. But rather than capturing us, his will remains intact enough to guide us on a spirit quest, to remember the parts of our past that the Lotus wished to keep hidden, more of her lies. Margulis lied to you, a lie of omission. She did not cure the Zeraman children, she erased them. My only hope is that truth still lingers inside you, buried within your mind. The power and the misery of the Void. The Ayatin sculptures are perpetually in motion, monuments of Oregon continuity, immortality. But this one is halted and aging, needing you. As the Queens do. Will you give in to them? Or will you face the coil? It is here that we meet our first choice. One that will decide the alignment of our values and the fate of the Origin system. I remember. Mother takes your hand and says there's been an accident. But don't worry, Angel, you're safe with me. Her eyes are distant, unfocused. She's lying. <gasps> Why does it have to be ravenous? The queen burrows into your mind just as the creature worms beneath your feet. With each step, you will discover what Margulis took from you. With each step, pain awaits you.
I can't even remember her face. Your past has weathered Margulis's manipulation. It lurks here. Your only hope of surviving the Queen's. Destroy this barrier and go deeper into your past. Sounds great. Ah. The air was acrid and still. The biomes had been sabotaged. The food stocks dwindled. Paranoia gripped your father's mind. What was it he said as he stared out into the starless black? Something's out there, kiddo. Watching us. Something's out there, kiddo. Watching us. The whole ship went insane. Exist on the fold between two worlds. The world we know, of blood and steel, and the world that watches and dreams, the void. Charge across the fold as you once did. Incredible. And I was kicking myself for not bringing a rope. together, their minds somehow unbent. You wipe away your tears, thinking, This is my family now. They tore her apart. The Queen is nearly through. She knows what you did, giving her a resolve. Now, you must master the fold. Walk upon its edge, concealing your movement within the shadows you create. Shadows I create. Another Teshin metaphor, right? Having discovered that exposure to the void aboard the Zeraman 10 0 caused the parents of the children to go mad, violently attacking each other and their children, and not having the guidance of the Lotus as our foster parent, we must break from the Confucian themes to determine our own core values. Our choice is to decide what we think of our parents and what they became. These choices are displayed on a seal and divided into three parts. Yang, brightness, Yin, darkness, or a balance of the two, yin and yang. Uh. Hear them. The grown-ups are howling. 
sitting at the door, drowning mad in the void ocean. But you, you are at ease swimming within the depths. You remember then how the howling stopped. They had broken through. They had lost their minds. I didn't blame them. We built a makeshift prison. They had lost their minds. Your repressed power has returned. Fused with your Tenno abilities, amplifying them. You've outgrown the Cradle. Now your transference is innate. Control these Oregon beasts and escape this prison. Control them? Like a Warframe? In Taoist philosophy, yin and yang are the materials that comprise the world. They create dualities of light and dark hot and cold, male and female, energy and matter. But these dualities are not distinct opposites, but a flow of change where one always gives rise to the other. An old Taoist saying goes, there is no heresy in Taoism, only sects. So to explain the idea of yin-yang in a modern sense, the dualities are like different states of a single thing. Darkness is merely an absence of light. Cold is just a lack of heat. Male and female is just one humanity. E equals mc squared. And all of it is just a matter of degrees. Not to be thought of as yin or yang, but how much yin and how much yang. This way of seeing the material world is an ontology very similar to the Buddhist principle of reality as transient, which is artistically expressed by the Ayatan sculpture, which stays in motion perpetually to remind its audience of the constancy of change. Know this, Tenno, that I am a Dax, a soldier of a lost era, the last of my kind. By Oregon hands, we Dax were given great power and great strength, but an even greater weakness. To obey their command, to never defy the Kuva, the Scepter, the symbols of their dominion. No Dax can ever raise steel against an Oregon. Only you can do that. Yet yin and yang are but one aspect of the world. If yin-yang is change, then the Tao itself is the opposite. Similar to the Hindu idea of Brahma, the unchanging self of reality, the Tao, translating to the way, is the permanent unchanging substance of the world. All pain, disease, suffering, and death are merely the result of diverting away from the Tao. A Yuvan theater, long abandoned. In ages past, I would have stood guard as the young and exotic were paraded through the mountain pass and marched by the viewing pain. They'd barter here, the Oregon, withering and coughing as they prepared for their continuity. She doesn't want me dead. No. The Queen doesn't want to kill you. She wants to become you. To burrow through your mind, corrupting it with despair until only she remains. In Warframe, the Tao is represented by the sentience, who, returning from the Tao system, another romanization of the Chinese word, were wounded and made barren by void energy. They were aligned with the Tao and suffered for separating from it. This is why they are called sentience, meaning capable of feeling pain, as opposed to sapience, meaning capable of rational thought. They are defined by their pain. Only the parasitical monster. 
monsters they had become. The endless void, the gazing abyss, the bottomless ocean of horror. It coiled itself around your tender heart. But the Tenno don't have to be. The Tenno can choose their own fate. Yang, I hated it. Yin, I embraced it. Yin Yang, I controlled it. I controlled it. Transference overload in five, four, three, two, one. Operator, is that is that you? Your brain activity flatlined for a moment there. Can you speak? My stars, the Operator's mind is destroyed! I... I'm fine. Ugh, just... Just don't play any music. I need to think. Music? Operator, you are not making sense. The transference surge must have affected you as well. Try to rest while I begin repairs. Hmm... This is odd. The circuits are dead. But I'm detecting transference energy. Coming from... Coming from you? Careful, Operator. You damaged the ship. Damage me. Amazing. How are you doing this? It is slightly terrifying, if I'm honest. Operator, my sensors have gone dark. Where are you? Oh, there you are. Impressive. Very useful. Bordis is a little afraid right now. Mm. Operator, you'll breach the hull. Please restrain yourself. Mm. Have you lost your mind? No. But I've lost my Warframe. And Teshin. What if the Queens know he helped me escape? I have to go back. Impossible. Just as you thought, the base has moved again. We don't have no way back. My Warframe. It's still there. Haven't you been listening? The transference system is fried. I don't need it anymore. Operator, where are you going? No! <laughs> It was all in our mind, a journey of the spirit, to take control of the power of transference. It was never the chamber that created transference, it merely channeled the void energy that created it. But we are stronger now, we are the channel for the flow. What did you do, Dex? What did you do? How did a child reject the continuity? Forgive me, my queens. We hold the scepter, we command you, we are! Sister, the dreamers come for us! Tenno, no! After everything you've endured to escape, why did you come back? I came back... for you. Stupid child! You don't give up in here in the flesh! <laughs> that was a big mistake! <laughs> Gods! Kill this war frame! And bring me my new skin! <laughs> Uh, how around our kids Guardians protect the brain. They're vulnerable. Attack! The red braids shield her. Destroy them! Shut up, you insolent dax!
lived in these ugly granny bodies. I need new flesh. I just have new flesh. Yours. God, kill this war frame and bring me my new skin. Uh huh. By my Oregon blood, I command you, Tish and Dax, to kill this Tello! No, I cannot. You must. By your oath, Eternal. That child I met on the mountain will surely die here. That child is gone. I can show you no mercy. Show me none in return. Yes, from the moment I began training you, I have anticipated this moment. You must not stop. Defeat me. I am beaten. We are Orokin. We created you. We are your golden lords. Come out! Come out, little demon! Without her scepter, she is powerless. Break her shields. And use your dash to steal it. You pay for that! <laughs> what are you waiting for, Dex? chance to kill you. And now, I finally have it. Shall I, Tenno? Yang, let her rot. Yin, kill her. Yin Yang, I will do it. No, I will do it. Rallied the troops. Get to your ship. I'll divert them. Go. Tenno. Tenno. I've been trying to get through. Are you all right? Your transference stream seems different, stronger. We have neutralized the queens. Teshin. Teshin helped me. I'm heading to extraction now. The queens. They cut me off. I should have been there for you. I'll signal orders to pick you up right away. Thank the stars you're safe, Operator. I forbid you to leave the Orbiter like that again. It's just too much for an old Cephalon like me. When we return, we argue with the Lotus. She defending Margulis and presenting our actions as the only way. As though we didn't have a choice. But we defending our right to choose by not defending any of them. You rescued your Warframe! What a relief! But, Ordis wonders, are you still able to walk the ship as yourself? Impressive! Just think of the possibilities! You can help me clean up that infested door! A mother wants to shield her child. Margulis didn't lie to you. She protected you. But isn't it better that I know the truth? Wouldn't you want to know? Teshin said... Teshin thinks he knows better. Maybe he does. 
Maybe you needed to know to survive the Queens. But you are changed now. That's what you have to say. That I'm changed. What you did, you didn't have a choice. Tenno, you were only just a... Don't. Don't do that. Don't make excuses for me. What's this? An old war beacon? How exciting, Operator! You would want to investigate this! Oh, I'm sorry. Did I interrupt? We leave to meet Tesh and Dax, to decide what to do with the Kuva. Power, immortality, and corruption. You don't know what to do with it. Tell me. Hmm. Some believe the Kuva within is the blood of Orokin ancestors. An elixir of power. Of immortality. Others believe it to be a poison. A corrupting oil that brings madness and evil. What do you believe? I believe them both. But for you, Tenno, Perhaps this Kuva is just a symbol that what you choose to do will define you more than anything. And a choice. Yang, destroy. Yin, consume. Yin Yang, control. to lose yourself, Tenno.
With every Yang choice, we stay optimistic while detaching ourselves from the problems of the past. With every Yin choice, we revel in power and fear, becoming more like the Orokin as we use the Kuva to command Teshin Dax. With every Yin Yang choice, we refuse to retreat from past conflicts, but use our own capabilities to forge the way forward. I can tell you understand what an honor this will be to have your tiny neck snapped by the Kayla de Thame. That's why you're so eager. I can appreciate that, and so does my audience. In the outermost reaches of the solar system, we clean up a straddling vestige of Grenier violence, a blood sport promoter on Sedna called Kayla de Thame, and her arena she calls Rathum. Tenno, you really want this? Fine, let's do this! Wake up, you gut sacks! The Tenno cheaters have decided to disrespect the rules of Rathum and come after me directly. Should I show them what we do? I can tell you understand what an honor this will be to have your tiny neck snapped by the- That's why you're so eager. I can appreciate that, and so does my audience. <laughs> The job nearly seems done. The balance of power is, well, balanced. But new threats always arrive. So, just to be prepared, we start raiding Orokin ships still trapped in time within the void. As we hunt, a familiar voice disturbs us. Look at them. They come to this place when they know they are not pure. My brothers, did I not tell of this day? Did I not prophesize this moment? Now I will stop them. Now I am changed. Reborn through the energy of the Yannis Key. Forever bound to the void. Let it be known. If the Tenno want true salvation, they will lay down their arms and wait for the baptism of my Yanis Key. I was cut in half, destroyed, but through its Yanis Key, the void called to me. It brought me here, and here I was reborn. He cut me down, but still I speak. I am energy, and I cannot be destroyed. Tower lost. Captain Vor has been reborn in the Void by using his Janus Void Key to slip into the Void just before he died. 
Now he claims to fully understand the void like no one else has before him. He taunts the Lotus for being something wholly ignorant of the void. Even as we slay him, Vor just becomes void energy, now its eternal servant. The Tenno and the Void are inextricably linked, and, having been exposed with how little we do know, we seek more. The perfect opportunity arises when one of the syndicates, the Red Veil, vale, needs our help. Receiving an all call on our syndicate frequency. It's a red veil in code, but it seems truncated. I will play back what I have. Speak to us. We're listening. What is your name? You remember. We want to help you, Rel. Tell us where you are. Mm. Can't. He's listening. He's listening. Who, Rel? Who is listening? Operator. The message appears haunted. Halted. It originated from a steel meridian ship near Earth. Will you investigate? I hope not. The Red Veil vale is, by and large, the edgiest of the Warframe syndicates. They value life, growth, and change of the natural world, but in the way that forest fires and volcanic eruptions are a helpful process for new growth. They are, by all appearances, the polar opposite of their rival environmentalist faction, New Loka, but in practice they are more dedicated and cult-like in their culture. The signal we receive is an encryption used by the Red Veil. Vale. A woman calls out, and a pained and frightened voice replies. We enter a Steel Meridian cruiser, only to find that the signal has driven Red Veil vale members to lunacy. Emergency power. Not detecting any crew. I don't like this. Search the area. Blades. Too refined for a Grenier kill squad. Is there anything else? Red Veil. Could they have done this? The Veil have been Meridian allies for years. Search for survivors. Tenno, I lost you for a second. What did you see? the area. Stay alert. It may be an ambush. Oh, holy child. I am grateful. What is it, Rook? Are they back? Great blind queen. Help me reach the safety of Iron Wake. Our sacred muse has abandoned the temple, leaving our people in chaos. If the Red Veil is in chaos, we must intervene. Get Paladino to Iron Wake. Brothers of Blood, 
Sisters of Fire, resist the muse! Bless Star Child. I owe you my life. Will you meet me at Iron Wake? Only you can right this wrong. They have slaughtered their allies and have now turned on the Red Veil's own high speaker, Paladino. The Grenier Separatists offer Paladino asylum at their home base, so that we can speak with her and find out what's going on. Steel Meridian has received Paladino. You've been granted access to enter their base, Operator. Iron Wake. Steel Meridian has built an impressive base of operations right under the nose of the Grenier Authority. The Veil speaker will be here, under guard. Find her. Leave your vessel at the door, sacred child. Come. Hush, Rook. This is our sacred guest. I am Paladino, holy speaker of the Veil, like my mother and hers before. We speak to the other side, to him. Without his focus, I pray. I pray he answers. Righteous realm of harrowed stars, of hallowed chains. Speak, for an age you've guarded the divide between dust and void. Speak, from within your everlasting sacred vessel, you held the lidless eye. Speak! I cannot reach Holy Rel from here. I will need his sacred focus, a relic stolen from the temple. I beg of you to find it and return it here. Only then will he speak to us. Only then will we truly understand. Veil rituals will incite fanaticism, but don't be drawn in. I'm not convinced this rel even exists. I fear we'll have to play Paladino's game to find out. Mortis has been tracking Red Veil disturbances. That's the best place to start. Rel is the name of the voice in the void. Could this Rel be the knowledge Captain Vor alluded to? What the Corpus prayed to? The corruption behind the Veil? Regardless, we need Rel's focus to gain some insight in how to stop these violent fanatics. Operator, a Red Veil seance. How... delightful? Veil disturbance, but perhaps you would prefer to... Gruesome leaves, Ed. Sorry. Navigation is bleeding, Operator. Uh, waiting. Navigation is waiting. Oh my. Find Rel's object of focus, child. You are close to this sacred relic. I am certain. These messages, they express Rel's suffering. He's lashing out. I should have seen the cracks forming. I don't understand. How would Rel know about the dream? Great sentient queen, forgive me. But what you are, what you've made of yourself, is merely drawn from the dreams of these divine children. You are not she. You are not Margulis. What are you saying? That Rel is a Tenno? Impossible. All Tenno are known to me. I protect them, as she did. Oh, but not Rel. Margulis cast him out, for he was different. Our foremothers took him in and studied his teachings. We became the veil, the shroud of his blessed existence. Cast out. I don't believe you. Rap, tap, tap. The man in the wall. As we search, Paladino tells us that Rel is a Tenno, and the only one to be cast away by the Orican Margulis. From Paladino, we learn about who Rel was and what made him different. Specifically, Rel was an autist. And I want to speak on this a little, because I am also a person with autism, 
Now, I am expecting that you have heard of Autism Spectrum Disorder, but maybe never had it explained to you. The Autism Spectrum is a series of behaviors that express many unique, neurally diverse brains. All of these behaviors are fairly normal and common throughout all of humanity, but when one person has many of the behaviors, or particularly extreme expressions of these behaviors, then it can have a debilitating effect on a person's life and ability to function in society. The debilitation, not the behaviors themselves make a person have autism spectrum disorder. Because autism is a spectrum, every person is somewhere on that spectrum. Because autism is a spectrum, every autist is unique, and no one person will have the exact same expression as another. To give some examples of my autism, when I was younger, high stress would often have me engaging in self-harm behaviors, like repeatedly hitting my head or excessively scratching my scalp. I struggle with understanding body language and and spoken tone of voice, which in turn made me inept at understanding many social norms and casual conversations. I struggle to find consistent work because of these challenges. I am able to get work, but frequently can only maintain those jobs for three to four months. People see my lack of understanding or implicit cooperation as challenges to authority or confrontation. And this, I believe, is the main reason that I have been threatened with physical violence at nearly every job I have held, usually by coworkers. I have worked on these things for my entire life by making an ever-growing catalog of social rules for myself. I would even write them down when I struggled to understand social dynamics that went particularly poorly. I am also hypersensitive to strong smells causing migraines. Learning about the autism spectrum has been a massive turning point toward my personal growth and understanding myself. Language, emotion, sensitivity, and miscommunication are common struggles for the autist because autists are frequently very empathetic but struggle to both understand or be understood by others. The Danta, his mother gave him this. Holy Rel was not like other children. Sound, color, touch, it overwhelmed him. The Danta's hum let him focus. No, mine. Rat, tap, tap, rat, tap. Tab. Rel, what evil is this? Sacred child, forgive me. I should have known the weight of the void would one day crush the light from me. Rel has become the very thing he warned us of. You cannot kill this, Tano. Run! You can only run! So, in what ways is Rel autistic? Rel has hypersensitivity to almost all sensations, light, sound, scent, and touch. Rel has trouble identifying body language that expresses certain emotions, despite having an acute vocabulary and understanding of emotional experience. Rel has hyperfocus on a specific topic, specifically space travel and navigation. And through all of it, Speaker Palladino does not try to fix Rel, only to listen to and understand him. Now, I have also seen people characterize Rel as expressing schizophrenia or dissociative identity disorder, and I understand where this comes from as well, but I am not knowledgeable enough of either to comment on the validity of the idea, but I would caution against mischaracterizing being a neurodivergent person as inherently suffering from a mental illness. Operator, what was that thing? Lotus, can you explain this? Lotus? Transference energy. Fractured. It was so cold. Indifferent. Inhuman. If Rel was Tenno, what did he become without Margulis? Leave your vessel at the door, sacred child. Come. I have served Rel my whole life, studying Rel's teachings of the Void. The dire consequence of traveling by and through it. Now I see that it is true. He alone, in his harrowing sacrifice, has guarded us. What a price he has paid. Righteous Rel, 
Outcast of sacred void, hear my voice. Speak. You have been driven from the vessel by your suffering. You have swallowed the poison star so we would not. Holy Rel, speak. The Tenno who rejected you have come to your aid. He's here. The Donda. It's working. Giving him humanity. We are listening, Rel. Speak. Shy? No, try again. This one? No, try again. Very good. And this one? Good, Rel. And how about this one? Mama. Yes, Rel. Mama. Go ahead, Rel. We're in a ship. Yes? Impossible speed. Beyond the Brankle Gap constant. Uh, I think so. You're better with that stuff, but it's amazing, isn't it? So why don't they fix me? Rel, you know why. Mm -hmm. Rel, why? Mm, because I'm not broken. That's right. Different. So I love you even more. Happy. Yes, Rel. You make me so happy. This memory, his humanity still remains. Buried in these emotions he so often failed to grasp. Could they be the key to saving him from this? Tenno, I have a theory. Return to your orbiter and I'll explain. Rel was with the children of the Zeramen 10 0, but when he was exposed to void energy, his mind was diffused across the void itself. As we use Cephalon Simmers' kinetic siphons, we slowly draw Rel's mind back together, and he starts to appear to us. These disturbances. They are transference energy, split apart from a single mind. If we could capture them, send them back. Operator, Simaris may have a tool for this task. I wonder if his kinetic siphons could be repurposed to robust. capture these manifestations. Holy Rel, let us bring you the peace you have earned. Guide this Tenno so you can return to the Harrowing Vessel, so that you might rest. Rel's warnings. Those dire consequences. He was talking about void exposure, wasn't he? The effect it has on human minds is well understood. But it's not. This isn't some kind of deep pressure bends as Margulis suspected. Rel saw what it was. Truly an entity. Indifferent. Old as stars. My fault. Touching is too much noise. It makes me... It makes me... angry. There! An emotion manifest from the game Rel played as a child. See if you can stabilize it with the kinetic siphon. Angry. Someone takes the thing you love. back. Happy. Mama has a stretchy smile. He's insane. Who knows what you're doing? It makes him stronger. Bored. Waiting too much. 
There's nothing fun to look at. Good. You've captured the manifestations here. Now get out before Rel's disturbance catches up with you. I don't know if you can make Rel whole again, but whatever you're doing, this disturbance is growing stronger, resisting you. Don't let it stop you. Bring Rel home to the temple. Is that where Rel is? Has the Veil preserved him in cryosleep as the other Tenno were on Lua? No. We didn't have that option. He's listening, but I'm so... Help me. Well, it's just you. Alone and trapped in a transference loop. Don't give in to these delusions of void exposure. There is no man in the wall. Say that. <laughs> Embarrassed. Talking and everyone looks at you. Why are you helping me? You hated me? It's too strong for the siphon. Try and weaken it. Excited. All the spider eggs are starting to hatch. They are here. The transference pieces. Track down these manifestations and capture them. Sad. Why did the babies eat the mother? All right. No more to be found here. Get to extraction. Operator, there is no evidence of any thing in the void. By my calculations, Rel has lost control of his transference. If we can gather these emotions, I hope he will be himself again. How could Rel have lived this long, without the long dream? In a way, he didn't. He knew his mortality would undo his purpose, so he gave up his humanity forever. He committed his soul to the undying vessel. His Warframe. Yes, he commanded we chain it within the depths of the sacred temple. An eternal vigil against the indifference. And you believed him. You helped him do it. Yes. After everything you've seen, wouldn't you? Shy. Meeting someone new and can't say hello. Scared. You look around and Mama's not there. Tired. You run and run. Until you can't run anymore. Blessed Tenno, Rel has returned to his sacred vessel. I will join him there at once. Please, come. For I fear I haven't got the strength to do what must be done next. If Rel's been caught in a transference loop for this long, the psychological effects could have been catastrophic. This man in the wall, these delusions, Symptoms of the void exposure all Tenno experienced. I hope that Paladino can find peace for Rel, so this never happens again. Our temple, our home, his tomb. Come, meet our guiding light. This is why you're here, Tenno. It is time for Holy Rel to rest. But I cannot bring myself to do it, to let him go. He's kept us, all of us safe for so long, and it's time for you to carry on. Release him, Tenno. Destroy the chains that bind the harrowing vessel. He's earned his rest. You may enter here, but only as your true sacred form. Sacrificed enough. Pass on your burden and rest. Tenno, destroy the chains. Only your sacred power will damage them. Tenno, something's wrong. That's not Rel. That's 
Let's have a little quiet. It's my turn to ask the questions. Well, love, I told you. You can't pet her that hard. Be gentle or she'll bite. Are you okay, Ralph? I won't let you take me from me. What have you done to Ralph? wait with the other kids until they fix the ship i love you but you have to go go but the in kids don't care about the invisible outs if you were alone in that drift you'd need a friend even like me The man in the wall is just Rel, struggling to understand himself. Without a Tenno reservoir, the only place his mind could hide was within his warframe, Harrow. But the isolation tortured him. Rel needed a friend, an imagined one in his warframe. By taking Harrow, we made it so that Rel did not have to pretend anymore. shadow and righteous blood. Blessed Rel, your aged vessel is dust and your chains are broken. Be free! Mm -hmm. But the man in the wall, who will? They will have to. All of them. They owe you this. We all do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel... Go on, Rel. Which one? This one, Mama. I feel... tired. Good, Rel. You are learning. Well, why don't you have a little rest, then? Okay. <laughs> okay, Mama. Rel becomes one with the man in the wall, and finds rest in the void. And he starts to appear to us, using our body to give himself a face, using the Lotus's voice to give himself a voice.
do something. Get me out of here. You know I can't. Can't or won't. To me, Ballas. You're no different than the rest of them. Margulis, please forgive me. sentencing of our comedian Margulis. You face the Jade Light. Recant, and we will grant a merciful death. My daughters, my sons, I want you to know my last thoughts are of you. How long have we waited for this moment? I... Forgive me. For what? I am not who you think I am. But of course you are. Imprisoned, just as she was. I will not abandon you again, Margulis. A trace of void energy sends us through space and time, and we witness the return of an orokin named Balas. He severs our connection to the Lotus. She doffs her helmet and takes his hand. She left with him? Sure, we have been clashing with the Lotus more recently, but also surely our mother would not simply abandon us, would she? We hear her whisper to us. It's the man in the wall. The man in the wall will lead us to Ballas, but the Tenno believes, or wants to believe, that the whisper truly is the Lotus, guiding us as always. Lua 
brings you strength, Umbra. But you cannot defy your creator. Even I make mistakes. Like you. Operator, are you all right? Your delta wave spiked for a moment. Ever since she abandoned you, was taken. Otis knows just what you need. A comforting memory from my data store. Otis, don't. Forgive me. This is who you really are, a Tenno. More than human, but once a child like any other. Enough, Otis. Scan for sentient energy on Earth. Recent activity. I don't think... Oh, what's this? Marking on navigation. How did you know? Oh, Ortis, this is the operator we're talking about. I am not sensing any sentience, but there is something. Oh no, rules. Something must have disturbed their incubation sacs. A disgusting life cycle. Operator, I am just a bug adult cephalon, but... If you ever need to talk, Odis would be happy to hear how depressed you are. I saw this place. How? Did she? Did the Lotus show you? I don't know, but I think she wants me to see this. Check for Warframe traces. This blade may predate everything in your arsenal. Very faint traces of mineral exposure from Lua. Remnants appear to be of Warframe composition. I am not familiar with this design. Almost crude. If you can get another scan, I may be able to synthesize a partial schematic of the victim. I know what you're going through. With the Lotus, I mean. Remember how you abandoned me? But look at how... Angry. Happy I am now. Don't worry, Operator. We'll find her. Processing. I have extraction ready. I think you should hurry. We find the remains of a destroyed Warframe, and, thinking it may be a clue, we rebuild the Warframe to find her. Uncertain if any Tenno has linked with this design. The transference bolt seems different, but we cannot build this without more data. What about Lua? You said there were traces on the weapon. Right. One step ahead, aren't you, Operator? Marking on navigation. Are you sure we want to build this Warframe? It could be dangerous. What I saw... What the Lotus showed me... This Warframe knew Ballas. It tried to attack him. What? The Warframes are transference control. Battle envoys for the Operator to command. I don't understand. Different. An Orokin Cypher. Impossible to bypass. They use mnemonic code glyphs drawn directly from your memory. Perhaps search the area? Curious. These markings seem fresh. Are there more? Another. Is that a paired symbol there? The order may be important for the cipher. Ordis? What are these? Some new sentient design? An old design. Mimics. Sentient mimics. These haven't been seen since the old war. How did mimics get to the origin system? Operator, be vigilant when approaching... the... things. Things. Sorry, I can't be more specific. These markings signify danger. Was this a containment cell for something? 
Umbra, Cavens must have compromised the enclosure. Likely. There are still strong aftershocks from when you pulled Lula out of the void. In trying to find this old Warframe, we discover an Orican Codex called a Vitruvian. Within it, Ballas' voice, and within it, the forgotten truth behind the Warframes themselves. Greatest of risk that I commit this recording, the codices within reveal the hidden weakness of your most feared enemy. My creations, my frames of war. A Vitruvian. This is rare Orokin technology. Incredible, it survived this long. You should destroy it immediately. What? No. We need to get inside. It's locked to a new set of codes. I'm bringing it back for analysis. I was afraid you'd say that. Operator, I'd rather not connect that Vitruvian to my systems. It could make me crazy. affect my systems in unforeseen ways. This may have belonged to Ballas. He's our only way to the Lotus. Please, Ordis. You had to say please, didn't you? Ordis, you need to learn how to stand up for yourself, to say no and mean it, even if it is the operator. Upgraded, Star Child. Your Warframe blueprint now has the required data. Check Foundry. When we build Umbra, it rips us from transference, but when we force the connection again, we may not control it, but we can peer inside. Good morning, old friend. I'm afraid the disease has taken your voice, but we've prepared the finest serums to treat you. Shall we pass the time with a game of Comey? Like old times. You remember this game, don't you? Old senses. Oh, this. I've had them fit you with a transference bolt. In honor of our history together. And look, look who hasn't left your side since you took ill. Look at him, old man. Look at your son. Can he hear me? Father? It's me. Isa, do you remember me? Of course he remembers you, young Dax. Which will make this reunion all the more tragic when you watch him die. The Warframe I warned you not to build, that you built anyway, caused a massive transference overload and damaged my precepts. It has escaped out into the system. When I linked to it, there was something there. A... Uh, a memory. Warframes are transference proxies for the Star Child. They do not have memories. Oh, well, this one does. 
Might be why it's unstable. Ortis, let me look at the Vitruvian. What led us here? You did, you vile blasphemies. Machines thinking, breeding. You were to bear us a new promised land. But when you arrived at that distant world, you knew that in time, we would bring ruin to it as well, as we had to Earth. And so it was, we came to war. Ortis, we need to track that Umbra Warframe. And so we pursue Excalibur Umbra to see into the past and find Balas. Starchild, are you seeking revenge for its damage to me? Will you destroy this Umbra Warframe? No. The codes are in his memory. If I can get close, I'll go in again and try to recover them. He's the key to finding the Lotus. I can feel it. There it is. Approach with caution. You may reflect. As he mocks and challenges us, the infestation encroaches on our mind. We gain another key to the Vitruvian. Your move. forget the time I finally beat him, but now I'm thinking he just let me win. I see. Curious. Well played. You served with distinction, old Dax. Weak in your honor, there on the wall. The sentient battle at Hall. I can't imagine. You were awarded the Lua Cross for Valor. Will you follow in your father's path? Of course. He will, and his children will. You see, these are the stakes of this little game. Each stone I capture will be another, and another, and another, culled from your subversive bloodline. You thought you could outplay me? I've had lifetimes to plan my defection. You spied on me, intercepted my communications. But I saw your move long before you took it. And so, we come to the consequences. <coughs> Father, you... you all right? Please, do something for him! Star Child, were you successful? I couldn't breathe. Somehow you are inverting the flow. Not from Tenno to Warframe, but Warframe to Tenno. There may be residual effects. Return to the ship. Hubris shone like a black star. For our technology, 
our war machines were your kin. How easily you turned them against us. We were forced to older means. Not circuits, nor light, but flesh. Our horrors passed, our ravaged outer colonies became gardens. We cultured the infestation, conceiving of a hybrid, transformed but only just. The Helminth was created, born to yield these new warriors, worthy of battle against you, the great and terrible Hanhao. We took our greatest, volunteers or not, and polluted them with these cultured reagents. They transformed. They became infested, but only just. Their skin blossomed into sword steel. Their organs interlinked with untold resilience. Yet their minds were free of the infested madness. Or so we thought. We set them upon the battlefield. Biodrones under our command. The Warframes. All of them failures. Surprised? They turned on us, just as you did. And so we had no choice but to commit them. To grave. This is all you know, Hun Ho. But there is a hidden half that, that lies within a place forbidden to you and your kind. I speak of the void. Star Child. Repairs continue. Allow me to test vestigial precepts for a moment. Like caring. Operator, operator, you you need to stop this. You could suffer permanent harm from Umbra's memory. What if you internalize all this? I, f I feel like he's leading me to the truth about Ballas. Right now, it's all I have to go on. Ballas must be tracking Umbra now. I'm detecting increased sentient presence in the area. As Ballas explains how the Warframes were created, we come to understand that he is not speaking to us, but to a sentient. Ballas has clearly partnered with the sentients to cause this chain of events. He sacrificed the Orkin and the Dax to the Tenno to take revenge for the execution of Margulis. We need to take care of those mimics. Lockdown ended. Very good. Now, where is that Warframe? Operator, please be careful. He is not in control. That did it! Trouble concentrating, old friend. Look at all your comey stones I've taken. This one, a brother. These three, his children. And on and on, all of these gone to the jade light. Father, do you remember your Shazin? Remember how you'd sing to us? Smiles from Jerome? A fine instrument. How thoughtful to remind him of his better days. Come now, you'll move. Only a few stones left. Isa, looks like your father still has his sharp wit. My father understands the game better than anyone. Yet you couldn't understand why I give my secrets to our enemy. How could I betray my own kind? But you have never had to sacrifice your love for faith. Imagine, to ever, with only one memory, seeing the one you love die. But you would have to imagine a lovingly cultured infestation swarms within your blood. Your 
transformation has begun. Reshaping you into a sacred surrogate of the unholy Tano. A warframe with but a single burning memory. It is a miracle. But all miracles require sacrifice. Who's going to what? Ballas. He's going to kill my... His... Son. Isa. But aren't these memories, Operator? You cannot undo what has been done. Before the vain faith, our people held dualism as truth. That all things were of two parts. Mind and body. Consciousness and matter of our world and the void. It was from there that our answer finally came. Distorted by vague horrors, we kept the Zaraman survivors within a secret reservoir. They were the missing half. Transference linked. The Warframes the body. And they the mind coordinates and codes to this place. But do not underestimate these devils somehow. They did what we could not. We had created monsters we could I know what I have to do. Operator? I don't need to hear it. I lived it. Prepare the landing craft, Ortis. I'm going in. Myself. I hope that doesn't mean what I think it does. Operator, please reconsider. You know how dangerous this is. The sentience will be here in force. This is why you bring a Warframe to these things. My Warframe is here. I just have to find it. There he is, Operator. The Umbra! Though we had begun to grapple with the turmoil inside the Operator, we had yet to realize the duality that defined who we are. We still treated Warframes as a tool to be used, a shell, but the Warframes are alive. Not just Umbra, but the Stalker too. All of them were once a whole person, but now a powerful body trapped in a purgatory of an adult mind, consumed by a single painful experience, all for the corrupt aestheticism of the Orokin. You have relived this moment countless times, but our minds are linked now. We'll face this together. This poison he's given you, it has taken your will away. You are a victim as much as your son. Sorry, Isa. The time has come. We are together. I am honored to be your son. Ballas did this. Not you. Don't worry, old friend. I'm not going to kill your boy. You are. Father? The fragile Zeraman children, trapped in a motionless body and the thought-distorting void energy, the purgatory of a boundless, powerful mind. But together, a mind to free the body, a body to free the mind. The suffering of Cartesian dualism is defeated by monism.
We had created monsters we couldn't control. We drugged them, tortured them, eviscerated them. We brutalized their minds, but it did not work until they came. And it was not their force of will, not their void devilry, not their alien darkness. It was something else. It was that somehow, from within the derelict horror, they had learned a way to see inside an ugly, broken thing. And take away its pain. And how is the pain defeated? By what singular idea? You choose. Yang. Wrath. Yin. Emptiness. Yin Yang. Acceptance. We accept this memory and move beyond its reach. Operator, you did it! Your transference signal is clean, synchronized with that warframe. Mark a path to extraction. We've got one last mission before this is done. Marking, but I'm detecting a mass of sentient forces converging on your location. Quickly, you may be able to escape. No. Let them come. Operator, we have no idea what Ballas is capable of. Please, reconsider this. Why would you risk it? Ortis, I'd like to hear her. Before we confront Ballas and the Lotus, our mother and father, we remember the Lotus. Who was the mother we thought we knew? You choose. Yang, the war. Yin, my child. Yin Yang, dream. Dream, not of what you are, but of what you want to be. He is waiting for you, but I'm detecting powerful signals emanating from the courtyard. They are calling out for reinforcements across the entire system. You don't have long. I tried to release you from your torment, but it seems those devils rebuilt you. What have you done with her? Ballas? Where is the Lotus? Has the wolf become a dog? Is this Umbra or some Tenno? Both. Then both will burn! You can defy me. Not even your Tenno Devil can defy. <gasps> I created you. And how do we see our father? The last choice. Yang. Yin. Yin Yang. This was inevitable. Yes. <laughs> yes. She 
has foreseen it. Where is she? Where is the Lotus? I am here, Tenno. What? What have they done to you? Nothing. This is what I am. Drifting. God beyond the Greek star. Mother, I am coming home. Only a glimpse, and then she is gone, returning to her real family, resuming her duty as a sentient. A new war approaches, and we need new allies. I... No. I... I don't know. But I'm going to find out. Since the apostasy quest, Warframe has been setting up the new war. The Rapala List boss, amalgams of sentient and corpus enemies, dozens of new sentient enemy types to fill out the sentient faction, and a couple of cryptic story trailers. Warframe has forged an identity in delivering story through highly metaphorical poetry, and I prefer it that way. I do also enjoy the new gameplay flows that Warframe has created. Necromechs are pretty fun after you give them some time, piloting a railjack feels like a fun minigame, and it gives Arcwing's purpose. I also think the changes to railjack missions will really start to sell this massive interconnected solar system that the developers always dreamed about at the beginnings of the game. However, their overall approach to story has changed. It is being drip-fed within certain missions, limited time events, and made to suit whatever new Warframe class is being released. I am ambivalent, because it simultaneously feels like the story is being delivered too broadly, as well as too small. Some storytelling inclusions deliver on lore, but it does not feel very related to the core philosophical themes that drew me in. Things like the Leverian Museum and a decoration that contains a cutscene. Other main story content seems to repeat the core themes, but without delivering much interaction with that story. Specifically, I am talking about the breakdown of the Confucian themes of family on the part of Era, the Lotus's brother shown only in two cutscenes so far. Other than that, we have had a couple expansions on the game's anti-capitalist themes through Parvo's Granum, but nothing that specifically rises to the level of formal Marxism or communism. There is also nothing that juxtaposes the Buddhist philosophy of desire as the source of suffering against the corpus ideal of desire as the source of wealth and progress which I believe would be the more likely approach given the artistic influences of Japanese samurai and ninjas and other aspects of Japanese culture that dominated early Warframe marketing.
betray her. not yet shown. But what am I? My father was a farmer. My mother, a carpenter. Given light by the Golden Lords to build for them. A better world. But my family's journey was long. Time began to change their light. Creativity. Pride. A will to live. So the Golden Wrath came. And after? I was born, a mimic, a spy, conceived to burrow into nests and swallow the pitch eggs of their war machine, the Tenno. But when I saw your tender faces, I took mercy, or so we were told. But in truth, we were both imprisoned in Lua's belly, my light remade by the creators. I became a memory, a ghost, reprogrammed to destroy my family, my people, my history. But now I am saved by family. Together, we will overcome the flaws of our light, the gods of our creation, merging with them like steel, bearing amalgams. 
with the weakness of neither. Right now, while Warframe's gameplay is becoming more expansive and interconnected, the story that had been so resonant with me feels like it's in a holding pattern, trying to hover just before the climax for as long as possible. As you can see, Betrayer, I've made a deal with an even higher power. Uh, but when it comes to this turgid monster, there is some liquidity in my loyalty. Clever! But maybe a little singed, are we? It's charged near capacity. What now? Your great power. Your great evil. The voice. The void within you. Our ancients still wither at its touch. But have you forgotten, Lua? You were saved. But I... I was changed. Aim true, betrayer. You've got it on the ground now. Pin it down. Set it up. Incredible. Take that big shot before it takes flight again. The top. Lies, ancient Robobolist. My other flesh. Your sacrifice will breed a new way for a new kind. Well, well, well. Looks like some serious crud is going down out there. Here's to you, anonymous troublemaker. Robobolist, rise, remain, and die. For the others to live. <laughs> yes, make that thing sizzle. I want to smell it. Oh. Yes, this is it, Betrayers. Rid me of this, this thing, and I will be grateful for at least a few days. The light leaves this one, and rejoins the rest. I will dig no grave. I will plant no stone. Only conceive a plan for our new home. The 
Maker's caught you. Unraveled your mind. They're using you to kill us. The Queen of the Infants, with her eye in the void. But I don't blame you. I blame them. You believe these are your children. But I am the only family you've got left. So choose our family, our people, or these parasites. Choose, Natal. Choose! I am not Nata. I am the Lotus. accelerating. Our chondrites are nearly ready. Our rebirth is at hand. And the Golden Spear? How many battalions? Still having lapses? Listen to me. That's the past. The old war. Tell her, Mater. Yes. There is no spear, no. Nata. Error speaks. Master Error. He speaks true. My... The Oracle are gone. The Bios are divided. In fighting over what remains. Only the Tenno. The Tenno. The enemy. Yes. Made by you. To kill us. Yes. But you have something our people have never had before, Natal. You're stained by their wickedness. Use it. Use their sin against them. They're listening. Let them. They know we are building. It won't matter. No, it won't. So what are you waiting for? Sing for us, sister. Call them home! Finish what she started. 
finish the war. Bring peace. Bring purity. On Lua, the Lotus, uh, I attacked you. You died. Hmm. You don't remember everything, then. <laughs> yes, your aphids wounded me, and our forces were depleting fast. I knew I had failed. Failed you, my sister. Failed our family. I had no choice but to retreat. No. You were destroyed. The Tenno made sure of that. You're still recovering. With all that the Makers did to you, it will take time to heal. He is one of them, isn't he? A Maker. The sentient threat has learned from past defeat. Reforming. Rebuilding. We must rebuild to contain that threat. We will reconstruct an Old War Era Sigma Series Railjack. A Railjack requires a viable command Cephalon. I am not a viable command Cephalon. I will identify a viable replacement. But first, recover the wreckage. Then, assembly. Return to your orbiter. You have a railjack. Tenno, all records of my mission have been purged from the weave. Why, I do not know. I had a crew. I must accept sole responsibility for their deaths. Conclusion, I am non-viable. But I, I am the only Railjack-compatible Cephalon. The sentients have almost rebuilt. Conclusion, I am, under the circumstances, a viable command Cephalon. If you will have me. Understood. I will begin the process of integrating myself with the ship's systems. This may take some time. Commencing. You may now enter your railjack. Meditation. War is a lifetime scholarship. The enemy, no finer teacher. Attempting to perceive. Cognition algorithms fail to prove a negative. Something touches me. Impossible. Don't forget, kiddo. You're nothing without me.
before we begin, let me say I was absolutely astounded by the new war quest line. We have so much to cover. Unfortunately, the quest is not replayable at this time and I am unable to see all the deviations that I did not choose. So, like the last video that caught us up to the new war, I cannot promise 100% accuracy to Warframe's story and canonical lore, but I do promise 100% honesty as we look at the new war through a lens of emotional affect and philosophical intrigue. I also promise to keep away from any excessive padding or gameplay without commentary or without important story beats. If any gameplay without commentary exists, I have retained it for the viewing experience of people who have not played the game themselves and waited for this video to watch the story unfold. In other words, for the sake of coherency. Writing this script alone took five days, by which I mean 120 hours of research and writing over a few weeks. I had to brush up on some themes from the previous lore video, I also brushed up on my understanding of quantum physics, but most of all I had to learn some ancient Egyptian hieroglyphics to retranslate an Egyptian philosophical text, relying heavily on the complete translations by experts of course linked in the description below. So what I'm trying to say is, this has been even more work than my original Warframe video, the most work I have ever done for a video, and I'm committed to making more detailed video essays like this one. So I'm relaunching my coffee-themed Patreon page. Check it out using a link in the description, become a Java Bean for as little as $3 a month, and get your name in the special thanks section of each and every video. I appreciate what everyone watching these videos have already done for me. 1,000 new subscribers, getting monetization back after YouTube changed the policy a few years ago. The extra funds really helped manage the costs of moving in with my fiance in January and covering some unexpected bills. If you do not like Patreon, that's cool. My videos here are always free. But if you would like to show your support, I have a link in the description to either send me a tip through Streamlabs or you can purchase a copy of one of my books. Controller Revolution Why Video Games Are the Future of Philosophy is a philosophical analysis of video games as a medium and its unique potential to become the practice of philosophy itself. And Ludolectic, The Gospel of Game Literacy, is a pragmatic guide for understanding the unique challenges of non-gamers attempting to play their first video game, and gives best practices for how to find games that non-gamers will enjoy. Good, with all that out of the way, let us begin. Part 1. Rejecting Confucian Hierarchy What is a family? Is it fate or is it a chance? Is it a duty or is it a choice? Can't it be both? But once the same, yet never changed. We open the new war on the sentient armada descending upon every sector of the Origin system. Starting their attack at the Unum's Tower on Earth, they possess the tower and use it to stage their invasion of the Cetus settlement and the Adelon Plains. Despite setting the town ablaze, Era steps onto the battlefield himself. 
gently lifting the toy mask of an Austrian child. He speaks with a soft, discordant gentleness, Don't be afraid. foreshadowing the sinister plan he and Balas have hatched. On the plains, we awake as Call 175 to the voice of Counselor Vehek screaming across the radio. Brother, brother, the worms have sworn the sector, but we will prevail. Regroup on my beacon. For, for, for the queens. Call moved to regroup, but upon seeing a Dargan pilot crash nearby, he chooses to change his mission to help the pilot. However, he is too late. The pilot has died. The reason? The sentient Condrix is too efficient at destroying the Gurnier air fleet. Yet even in the face of Counselor Vehek's doubts, Call's devotion is too strong to give up. So Call makes a plan to take it down from the inside. Eat? Alive? Oh. What if food is bomb? Hmm. Brother Call! Yes! Find something with a high enough yield! Hurry! Triumphantly calling for the queens, Call single-handedly defeats a dozen sentient brachiolists and battalists. Call 175 kills an ortholist with only a machete in hand, and deftly weaves between sentient energy spikes and sentient patrol lights. Finding a handheld explosive device, Call repeats, for the Queens. For the Queens. Call 
Kahl's face then alights with joy. Just in time, a battalion of Grenier charge forth, only to all be killed in the very next moment. Call 175 survives the explosion. Crawling for his life away from an encroaching battalist, Call finds the body of a fallen warframe in the grass. Call pulls the Warframe's weapon and fires. He now wields a prime shotgun, the perfect weapon to take down the Kondrix's final guardian, the shield-bearing Symbolist. Call executes the symbolist with vengeance in his eyes. Approaching the base of the Chondrix, Counselor Vehek commends Call with one last queenly salute, but Call 175 has another thought. Mid breath, he speaks what is truly in his heart. With this line, we introduce the first theme of the new war, the total rejection of the Confucian social hierarchy. The queens had always been useful to the Grenier command structure, yet so reclusive and hidden that even the Lotus once believed the queens to be mere propaganda. Even with one of the queens killed by our hand, the Grenier continue as though nothing happened to them at all. Yet the one thing that has remained true about the Grenier is how they talk and behave throughout all of Warframe, their devotion to each other. From the Simris imprint where they first disobeyed their Orican superiors, to Tile Regor extolling his love for the Tube Men, to the Steel Meridian's desire to liberate their brothers and sisters from the Grenier command structure. When all chips are on the table, the Grenier do not act out of duty or obligation to a social hierarchy, but for the love of their family. In so doing, despite rejecting the value of the Confucian hierarchy, Call 175 exemplifies one of the five constant virtues of Confucian philosophy. Ren. Altruism, empathy, humanity, sacrifice. As Confucius defined Zhen, wishing to be established himself, he seeks to establish others. Wishing to be enlarged himself, he seeks to enlarge others. But before Call can achieve the aim of his virtue, he is approached by a Ra with the same uneasy gentility. We next find ourselves in a Corpus cruiser, face to face with a Corpus engineer awaiting a blast door to open so that he can make his escape from the burning ship. Only Alid V makes a call down to the crew. Something just came up and he needs you to come into work, Vizo. Hold fast to your 
stations, crews. Our glorious victory is close at hand. <laughs> oh, and uh, any remaining techs aboard narrow bend me at once. Confirming tech aboard. Viso Dash R at your service. Most gilded director. Most yes, yes, tech profit. My command overrides aren't working. I need to break fire control from the fleet. Can you fix that, Vico? It's Viso, most lucrative and sagacious visionary. Uh, yes, I can try. There's a trace conduit nearby. I can bypass it. Yes, do your thing. There's a nice bonus in it, if you can. A breacher MOA could clear that debris. Wonder if the robotics dispensers are still functional. Alad V is curiously asking you to disable the fleet's weapons, but you are not one to disobey your boss. Using a breacher MOA to progress, it self-destructs while shouting, This is joy. Demonstrating how, even under normal work conditions, the corpus proxies propagandize self-sacrifice to the corporate hierarchy. Why are you shooting at me? Sir, Viso here. Our robotics have gone rogue. The sentients must have latched the grid. Someone has. Yes. I'll pull some meat crews to cover you. That override. Um, Viso. Oh, right, I've got a data pad, secure robot dispenser access, and a plinks. Right. Upon breaking through, we see that the sentients have hacked the Corpus network and now control most of the ship's striker MOAs. A functioning shield room dispenser? Oh, thank Prophet. No shame in maximizing my shields and just running. Their shields are too strong to shoot through. Maybe if I boosted mine somehow. How many hostiles ahead? I can't do this! Unless... I get a striker MOA. Turrets look a little less scary now that I've got a striker MOA. Disengage fire control from the fleet. I... I don't understand. Look outside! We're all about to be under new management. Now do your part, or I'll find a more forward-thinking replacement. You fight your way through for the sake of Alad V's command, only to be rewarded with a failure to remember your name and a threat of being fired. As you continue to fight your way forward, Alad V continues to promise reward, but he accidentally let slip an insult to the Corpus Board of Directors, planting in Viso a seed of doubt. Gotta blast those shields while I can. And just in time to fight a jackal proxy with only a few droids and your plink pistol. Management is 
about to pay a personal visit. Be quick. I've got to stand out fire when they talk with us. Well done, Vico. We secure command override as Alad V secures all the credit for the risk that you took for the achievement you just earned. Here we see another break from the ethical demands of a Confucian hierarchy. In Confucianism, rulers are meant to earn obedience from their subjects by following the will of heaven and providing for their subjects' needs. Yet, short of divine retribution, classical Confucianism has no means by which to hold accountable the superiors in the five relationships that fail to do this. Unlike the Grenier sense of family, a corporate so-called family will never see a superior sacrifice themselves for their employees. It merely mandates the workers sacrifice themselves for profit. Like when your manager expects you to come in to work on a holiday, but never works the holidays themselves yet still tries to guilt you for not supporting the corporate family when you choose not to sacrifice your personal time for the business. Thus, as a religious hierarchy that worships the acquisition of wealth and status, the Corpus Board of Directors are something like the Pope of the Catholic Church. Thus, we could read Alid V's betrayal of the Board in favor of a sentient partnership as a rejection of the will of heaven from a Corpus Confucian cross-cultural worldview, thus meriting Vizo's disobedience. What happens in a Confucian society when the person in the lower role of the five relationship disobeys? Well, at least for this section of Corpus society, the natural result is a social collapse when Vizo fires on the sentient ship. A social collapse in the form of being destroyed by a sentient laser. The enemy's eye turns upon our allies. Quickly, press onward. Through the explosion, the Tenno's Railjack cuts through, breaking past sentient fighters. Through the perimeter. You're sure about this? It should be me. No, Tenno. Your Warframe will be useless until I clear the Orphix fields. Then, we will meet inside. Teshin, what if the Lotus won't? If I must, I can make the harder choice. How tediously human. A slapdash alliance making a feeble last stand. If you all crave death and a final flash of glory, I am more than happy to oblige. Shot. Systems rebooted. We are good to go. You will need to get closer to your mother's ship. Huh? Did you just... Squadron incoming. The enemy is wise to our diversions. If hull integrity continues to drop, this will be a one-way trip. Mothership in range. Problem, slingshot damaged. Crew, hold position while I route a bypass. Do you think there's a shred of Lotus left in the top? All this time, it's been dying. The tomb is scorched from its rotting hole. Slingshot patched. Ready for launch. Tashin, I'll be awaiting your signal so I can bring her home. I 
I'll clear the Orphix, and we'll do it together. Teshin retains Confucian duty. Orphic's fields will be scattered. The Orphic's fields will be scattered deep in the ship. Orders can help you triangulate them. What? I'm only trying to... I don't need your help. Switch off. We send in Teshin Dax to infiltrate the sentient ship and destroy the Orphix fields that render our warframes useless. The plan is still to rescue the Lotus, but if all else fails, Teshin plans to cut down the Lotus should she truly have betrayed us. As Teshin fights through the sentient ship, he and Ordis discover dozens of Grenier foot soldiers have been captured, suspended for some unknown purpose. Observation. A power field requires a power source. Ordis. Yes? Would you like me to defend that for you? <sighs> The devil sends their relic to do the deed. But then, we're both relics, aren't we, old man? Balis contacts us as we begin to break down the Orphix field, calling on Teshin's sense of honor and duty. Wallace tries to remind Teshin of his allegiance to the Orokin way of life. Teshin comes upon something unknown, a red and gold disc swirling with red liquid. Haunts him with the memories of the words he spoke to the Tenno child while under the control of the Red Kuva. Wallace interrupts again, questioning if the factions are more free in this Hobbesian state of war than they would be under his rulership. 
Upon defeating the final Typhalist and destroying the Orphix fields, Teshin chooses to confront the Lotus, Era, and Ballas alone, without the Tenno. Anticipating the coming trap, Teshin holds to his Confucian sense of duty toward us, protecting us as though an older brother would a sibling, as he always has. Orphix fields are disabled. The operator should be cleared to board. Let me nudge the snares first. This failure to reject the hierarchy That's will be his undoing. Come to me, old man. I am eager to show you how this war ends. Not with brutality, but with hope. Not with lies, but truth. A truth for all who are strong enough to believe. Even you. As Teshin approaches, Balas speaks again, claiming to offer hope, strength, and truth. But what truth can be offered by a corrupt Orokin? Balas wakes us. We are now seeing through the eyes of the Lotus. You're going to want to see this. Watch the veil do its work. Call out Dax. The moon behind a cloud. No! He'll give in soon. They all will. And this world will be over before it even begins. Not with bombs and blood, but with truth. And they programmed you and your kind. Now it is our turn to power them. Summon your devil. It's time. See the veil work, turning his memories inside out. Making him see the things he's lost. Putting pain where it serves us. A lost love, perhaps. A life cut short by the very Tenno he had sworn to protect. Our old man. Give her justice. Give her peace. I... I feel... A new trick. A tool called a veil has been placed over Teshin's eyes. Era gives an order. Teshin tries to maintain his self-control by meditating on two pieces of Buddhist imagery. Cool water flows, referring to a river, the Buddhist symbol for time, the ever-transient ontology of material things. The moon behind a cloud. The moon is the Buddhist symbol of the cosmic Buddha view of the universe, of truth. Teshin is saying that the truth is being obscured. Yet Balas insists that his war is a path to the truth. They, the Orokin, controlled the sentience forcibly. So why not let the sentience forcibly change the minds of all the remaining factions? Era commands Teshin to bring us to the trap while Balis explains that the Veil is changing Teshin's memory of a loved one, Valeria, to make him believe she died by Tenno hands. Teshin manages to overcome the mind control, and Ira moves to slaughter him. But we arrive just in time.
We finally see the lotus, her body deteriorating like ash in the wind. Yet Balas is delighted to see us. He leans down to the lotus, and with a kiss, drains her of her life. The sentient ship then opens a portal to the void, seeking to dispose of Natal. We rush to save her, but Balas severs her hand with Parasesis, the very sword he taught us to craft to fight off the sentience. Nata, a sentient, would not survive within the void. You cannot kill the devil, Tenno. But you can send it back to hell. Balas cuts us down as well. Our body falls into the void amid growing interference with our transference. But this is strange. What are we failing to connect with? Our Warframe? Something else? This same pixelated distortion, a chromatic aberration of space and matter itself, accompanies any and all failed attempts to complete transference. Perhaps the better question is who are we losing connection with? The Lotus, or ourselves? Part 2 Africana Philosophy Ancient Egyptian Symbolism Balas now sits atop a gold red throne. The people cheer before him the name Narmer. That is who we see now. Narmer is the name of Balas's new faction, and to understand the dynamic at play, it is prudent to look to Narmer's real world namesake. Narmer was an alternate name for Pharaoh Menes, the first king of the first dynasty of Egypt following King Ka. The name Narmer means painful, stinging, sentient, and also catfish, which may be a reference to his constant lying and emotional manipulation. This makes Narmer in Warframe the sentient faction. The Narmer palette shows the ancient Egyptian wearing both crowns of Egypt's northern and southern regions circa 3200 BCE, which suggests that Narmer completed the unification of Egypt that began with Ka, his father. I stand before you, last of my kind, an orphan of Tenno massacres. But their violence did not end with me, did it? 
it's carried on to all of you. Grineer languished in their torture plexus. Ostron clades starved for Tenno Tide. Corpus pupils weeping Tenno praise under blade. Solaris souls blacken the skies of Tenno foundries. Our time. An era of peace and security. The devils have been cast out. And by the void, the Tenno shall never return. We see his sentient army taking over each sector as he soliloquies critique at the Tenno for pretending to be Thomas Hobbes' Leviathan. But he goes on to blame Tenno for the abuses of the Grenier and the Corpus as well. From what was done to Teshin, the player knows that these are lies and propaganda. Yet to what end? What is his goal? If he wanted to kill the Tenno, he already did. If he wanted to be king, he already is. Or perhaps he is reaching out to those few remaining dissidents whom resist him convincing them with words of milk and honey to come willingly. Comms are bad tonight. How many prisoners, you think? Too deep to know for sure. But what if there's an archon down there? Don't do that. Watch me and I'll release the door. now. I'm not going to hurt you. Let me get that thing off your face. All is one. All is one. All is one. All is one. I told you. I told you. I love Call the ship, smartass. During a mission to rescue Austrians from Narmer mind control, this random drifter encounters an Archon, an amalgam of a Warframe body and a sentient head, this one presenting the feminine body of Mag along with the head of a serpent. The Archon namesake comes from the tradition of Gnosticism, an early schism in Christianity in the 1st century AD that focused on gaining esoteric, spiritual knowledge through magic. Depending on which Gnostic sect you are reading, Archons are the final emanations of the one true god. Archons are the lesser deities that created the planets and who maliciously keep people from ascending beyond the secular world. Only magical knowledge can allow a person to transcend the Archons and reach divinity. However, different Gnostics counted different numbers of Archons, between 5 and 365. 
their names and appearances drawing from various other cultures, Jewish, Christian, Greek, Roman, and Egyptian, all were being put into new systems under the Gnostics. The Archons we will encounter are only three in number, and while the Narmer mantra of all as one may refer to the Gnostic monad, the one true god, many cultural traditions also claim a single god, Christian and Jewish, Zoroastrians, and one of the first, the Egyptian Aten, or the Cult of Re. Upon closer inspection of the Archons, we are still centrally within Egyptian cultural thought. Whoever's picked up the mantle the Tenno dropped, drifting wild, popping masks and loosen bonds. Whoever you may be, we salute you, Drifter. The Drifter returns home, greeted by the Lotus, revealing to us that the Drifter is the Tenno child, but aged. We somehow pulled the lotus from the void, but she has died. She is an Eidolon now, the remnant energy of a sentient body clinging to nothing. What do you think, Ordis? What do I think? I think... Finish her! This is torture. What's left of her is just wasting away. We've tried everything. I have no care and feeding of Eidolons in my data arrays. We don't know what we're dealing with. No, we don't. But you know someone that does. I know someone that... Wait, Operator, you can't be serious. I told you, don't call me that. Sorry, uh, sorry. If you want to get to the outer systems past Narmer, we'll need a corpus shuttle. We are desperate for help, but who would be knowledgeable of how to revive a sentient from death? Well, one that has already been there and come back to tell of it. We travel to Venus to steal a heartier ship from what remains of Fortuna.
Vox Solaris collapsed under Narmer. You're on your own here. Keep your head down and get topside as quick as you can. Wait. Deacons. They'll sense if you're not failed. Give them a wide berth or you'll be sucking black woods before long. This disc Teshin saw was the symbol of Narmer, a gold red sun. Balas, as the reigning son who inherited the Orokin dominion, calls on his people to praise and extol his name. He promises freedom through relinquishing independence and responsibility. Its shape is a symbol called the Sun Disc, which represented Aten, the sun god, though only a lesser god seen as an aspect of the god Rei before the 13th century BCE. Pharaoh Akhetaten in the latter 13th century named Aten the only god in the dynasty's new monotheistic religion, and he presented himself as the son of Aten. By the end of his reign, depicting Aten in art was outlawed, and thus most depictions of Aten are still found as the sun disc worn atop the head of the sun god Rei. Tags. Then you'll be wanting to pay a visit to that bleeding brain buster factory. I know a shortcut. Might grab yourself a K drive if you've got the legs for it. Name's Little Duck. And you? She must be that stick in the spokes I've heard about. You weren't in with a Tenno back in the day, were ya? Something like that. Fresh shipment of brain busters, and there's one with your name on it. See, security's lax on the camp, now the only way inside is wearing one of those sticky things. What? Oh, you, you don't know what effect it will have on you. There's got to be a better way. Afraid not. In order to sneak into the Corpus facility, we had to wear Narmer's veil. Pops my plugs to think that some people take the veil by choice. Warm lies are more comfort than cold hard truths, eh? And it showed us the Lotus, the person we care about most, telling us a false history of Balis being our protector, while the Lotus was merely a jealous wife, scorned by her husband for our sake. You're inside. Think happy thoughts, yeah? Uh, uh, my child. So beautiful to behold. How do you feel? Uh, we found you within the journey, Chairman. Fairly. Void in your heart. But Ballas, she saw a lost child in need of a father. As you recover, he noticed me less and less. What good was I to him if you weren't sick? Dreams were the only choice I had. Your harrowing dreams of 
mother, father. I made them nightmares. Balis was like a father to us, the lotus like a mother. Blending in nice, but I'd still give those deacons a wide berth. Did you know they can detonate those veils if they smell a rat? Take your face off that. Are you serious? It didn't occur to you that you might want to mention that before we put one on? It did, and I didn't. Needed you focused. But whereas Balis wanted Neta, the sentient mimic, to be his lost love Margulis, she chose to be our mother first and foremost. That made Balis jealous. The Orokin's vain faith proven wrong. Nata could not be Margulis just because she looked like her. Head factory got hit. No doubt the handiwork of that drifter we've been hearing about. Feels good to have a little bit of truth in the world. Navigation is marked, but I hope you change your mind. We have our ship now, so it is time to pay a visit to our estranged family. We travel to Uranus to visit Grandpa Hunhau and Cousin Stalker. close, in case I come to my senses. Exalted. The dissident remains entrenched in the shadows below. The sea runs crimson with the blood of our faithful. But I will prevail. In Narmer's name, all is one. from the shadows it will not matter my faith is too strong the light of Narma will bring it the truth all as one <laughs> only only 
I remain. The test of my faith in trembling light. But I am not afraid. Ballas will save me. His love is within me. All is one. All us. Just as incomplete as she is. No metal beasts. No void fury. They will snap you in half and plant a veil on your face. Not if you help me. <laughs> help you? Of course. What are friends for? Let me explain what you are up against, friend. You see, the Archons were made by my son, Era. Hybrid abominations of the old war, raised from the blighted battlefields where Sentient and Warframe fell. Hunhao explains the Archons to us and helps us prepare to confront them. Boreal is an amalgam of Volt and an owl-shaped sentient head. They are reminiscent of Horus, the falcon-headed god of the sky, whose eyes were the sun and the moon. The eye of Horus became an important symbol of protection for royal families in Egypt, just as Boreal protects Balas. Horus would also be associated with wisdom through Thoth, the baboon-headed god of wisdom, was often depicted holding the eye of Horus. Horus would also be associated with wisdom and owls by later people of the Hellenistic heritage, with the Greek goddess of wisdom Athena often depicted with an owl as a familiar. Terrifying, yet this moment is your only chance to close in, unseen, and strike. Amar, an amalgam of rhino and a wolf-shaped sentient head, he is reminiscent of Anubis, jackal-headed Egyptian god of the dead. Coils of flame. Survive the flame, and you might see frenzy, a relentless fury of slashes. Only the greatest of force will subdue him in this. Should he howl? The pack will appear, mirrors of himself, meant to confuse. Only the true eye can distinguish the Alpha among them. Nira, the mag serpent amalgam we saw before, reminiscent of Wajet, the serpent protector of Egypt, wet nurse to Horus, and guardian deity to women in childbirth. The Eye of Horus is often called the Eye of Wajet. Every unfurling of its tip. Her 
Whip is more than pain. It is protection. And more. For if you stand in awe of its spiral, the great thunderclap that follows will knock you senseless. Though she may be diminished somewhat by this exertion. And her gaze. To meet her gaze is certain death. Only by turning away would you hope to survive. work to do. You can lay here all you want, doing nothing, wallowing in ancient grudges. She chose the Tenno. But Ballas and your groveling son, they used her. They'll do it again and again, burning her up for whatever suits them and tossing the ashes when they're done. They cannot have her. Tenno. Wait. I have wallowed here. It is true. Fading in this deep hole. Waiting to die. But without release. Held here by a purpose I cannot abandon. That she is free. So no. They cannot have her. But hear me. Even if I help you. Even if by some miracle you succeed, she will not be the same. Even for us, death leaves a mark. Do you understand? I understand. Sentient Han Hao now gives us an ancient weapon to kill the Archons, Nataruk, a bow that fires explosive sentient energy. Its namesake, Nataruk, is the name of an archaeological dig site in Kenya. The human remains found there are purported to be the oldest evidence of a human tribe murdering themselves in armed conflict more than 10,000 years ago. The oldest historical record of humanity engaging in civil war. If you are worthy of Nataruk, you won't mind the little test. Archons will raise the dead to swarm you, but Myra is not the only one to call thunder. Nataruk can fire fast and true. But you will need to time your release with the weapon's rhythm if you hope to pierce the blighted skin. You are quick to it, but facing the Archon will not be as easy. You must study and prepare. Huh. Oh, but, uh, you! You're alive! I can hardly believe it! He actually agreed to help? Yeah. Bastard even gave me homework. You cannot kill the devil, Tenno. But you can send it back to hell. Thank you. 
Part three: Tenno and quantum physics. A flashback or an experience? We find ourselves on the Zeremin Ten Zero, being given our daily lesson by the ship's cephalon. Save all that chitter chatter for Tao. Our jump schedule has changed again, so we're moving exams up with it. Everyone has studied their temporal axioms unit, I assume. T A. We were meant to have physics. By my precepts, I've never had such an enthusiastic group of students. Now, eyes on the main screen and pay close attention. Temporal axioms, unit six: the prison of linear time. Presentism, the obsolete theory of linear time. Posits that now is all that is real. In this frame, the present absolute, the now, moves constantly toward the future. When are we ever gonna use this stuff? <laughs> and leaves the static past behind, discarded, consigned to unreality. The future remains to be discovered, but is less real than even the past. We see the shadows on the cave wall, but not the hands that cast them. The void offers humanity the truer telling of eternalism that now is merely a facet of a great block. My head hurts. It is relative, and we can change the frame. The tyranny of the present absolute is overthrown. Tomorrow is now its equal. Students, eyes on your own screen. The lesson attempts to convey the Intrati teachings on how time works in Warframe's world, inspired by a real theoretical framework that attempts to explain quantum physics, the many worlds interpretation. Let me attempt to explain the basics of quantum mechanics, but only what is relevant to this story, so that we do not get lost in this topic. Number one. Quanta just means distinct and countable, an amount that does not divide into a smaller piece. It does not mean magic. Number two, a particle is an expression of energy in a quantum field that overlays the whole universe. Example: a photon is localized energy in the electromagnetic field, and we call this light. Number three. Particle changes and movements are not strictly determined. It is a range of possible outcomes, randomly determined at a moment of observation. Observation is, when doing the math, the event of taking a measurement. This is called wave function collapse. Number four. What does the universe consider an observation? What causes a wave function to collapse when a human person is not taking the measurement for science? These are still open questions that are hotly debated and spawn most of the theoretical frameworks of how to explain what the heck is going on with all that timey wimey particle physics. There are currently many different competing theories for explaining wave function collapse. One of them is the many worlds interpretation that every possible way the wave function could collapse does so by generating an entirely distinct and separate universe. Every possibility is an actuality. If this were true, then the question of physics as a whole is not what happens or how things happen, but which universe it happens in. 
If time and space, the principle of change, is also quantized, meaning distinct, individual, and countable, then, like a single frame of an animation, a single sticky note from a flipbook cartoon, any moment of any thing, anywhere, and any when is its own, extant, real thing from its own universe. But it should be noted that this interpretation does not mean that anything is possible. Instead, it means that which is possible is always actual. Consistently, Warframe associates the notion of time and probability with the void. So, if the many worlds interpretation of quantum physics is true, why not see those expressions of quantum fields from each universe as overlapping or interchangeable? Why couldn't you take one sticky note from one flipbook and put it into a different flipbook animation? Just change the frame, then let the universe continue to play out again, but different this time. The classroom lecture video starts by diminishing a view of time as a single moment that changes on a linear path by the name presentism. Referring to Plato's allegory of the cave, it calls the present moment a shadow, a facsimile of the truth, but missing an understanding of causality, the hands that cast the shadow. However, the dismissal of presentism is also a departure from the Buddhist philosophical inspiration in the game's early days. A common metaphor used in Buddhist thought to explain time and its function is to imagine a river. It has a beginning, middle, and end. It is always changing. Yet there is only ever one whole river. Time is the river. Just one momentary river experiencing change. The Orokin seem to have disagreed with this, and were apparently, canonically, right to do so. Replacing presentism with eternalism, using the void allows the Orokin to just choose which possibility is presently represented in their universe. While taking a test on the presentation, the writers at Digital Extremes also take the opportunity to see if you can avoid some common logical fallacies, like the popular fallacy and the appeal to authority. But just as we finish the quiz, we begin the void jump to the Tau system, and something goes wrong. Back at our orbiter, the Drifter begins the task of hunting the Archons, beginning with Boreal. How long does she have? Not long. You must hunt Era's Archons at once, and take from them their power over restoration. Given such a task before you, I suspect you'll be gone before she. Forgive me, but this would be a lot easier if you could use that old, uh, Tenno magic. How did you lose it? I didn't. More like, I don't have it yet. Interference again. There's got to be an Archon nearby. A curious weapon, Drifter. You seem to have made a powerful friend. They have me, Ira. 
Until you come to your senses, Balance is not one of us. He is a parasite, adapting to whatever suits him. He is using you and our kind. Surely you see that. See what? A century of your failures? Your betrayal of your own people? Namor has given our people more than you ever could. Victory. When my Archons have crushed this Scantfly, you'll be back to rotting in the deep. Alone. Hun Hao and Ara argue about Balas's worth. Is he really helping the sentients, or is he pursuing something else? We reach Boreal and... After great struggle, find a way to dispatch it. The fight is too great for us, as Hun Hao predicted. With no Warframe nor Void energy, we end up relying on the Stalker to finish the fight by removing the core. dragons and doing it in style keep those hits coming <laughs> drifter we return home to feed the crystal to the lotus
Back on the Zeramen 10 Zero, we relive the trauma of barricading ourselves into the classroom to keep us safe from the adults' void madness. We attempt to comfort and strengthen each other in ways that evoke the yin-yang dichotomies that we have seen in previous quests. Yang, something went wrong with the jump. Yin, we're in this together. Yin-yang, we need to stay quiet. Something went wrong with the jump, but we'll survive. Promise. Okay. Hey. Why don't you go sit closer to the others until we get environmental back? My mom's coming to get me soon. Yang, we're on our own. Yin, your mom will come. Yin Yang, we'll be your family for a while. Snap out of it, we're on our own now. No, my mom's coming. But doing the rounds, we see a child tapping on the window. They look at us with our face, saying they will take our light. It's the man in the wall. Hey, lose your light. Here, you can take mine. Thanks, kiddo. I think I will. To left. Just a simple choice between the horrible one and the terrifying one. He was not just with Rel when Rel fell into the void. He was with all of us on that day. The Lotus and Ordis were wrong. Captain Vor was right. The void is alive. The man in the wall is real. Pursuing the second Archon, Amar, Hun Hao again appeals to his son to give the sister her freedom. Archon in the vicinity, operate... Sorry, old habit. Don't sweat it. The new one. I don't think I get it either. I know you. I feel it. Itching in my mind. You're not just some lucky drifter, are you? Well, my Archon will be prepared for you and your friend. I'm afraid that luck of yours is all spent. Era, call off these aberrations. Give your sister a second chance at freedom. Are you so blind to the truth? You haven't won. You are a dax in every way but name. A servant to the old golden lord. A second chance. I see. You're not just trying to stop my archons from finding her. You're trying to bring her back yourself. By the way, she'll soon be returned to us, and this time as Nata, purged of Tenno lies and human weakness. Era wants to hear none of it. Just as we wanted the Lotus back, unchanged, Era believes that obeying Balis will restore the Nata he knew before the events of the Old War. 
He wanted to place the sentience in the seat of power, but Hun Hao points out the obvious, that the only dominion is Balas's own whims. The only dominion belongs to the Orokin. centuries, our people will finally flourish as we were meant to, atop the pyramid of living things, all of us as one. Are you trying to convince me or yourself, son? We bring the second Archon core to the Lotus. Fairy stories ain't ever just about how monsters are real. There are lessons in how monsters can be killed. Here's to you, Drifter Drifter Archon Killer, and closing the book on this particular fever dream. I'm a little unsure about this. Last time she snapped at you. What'll it be this time? Unless she sprouts fangs, I'm sure it's fine. Besides, there's still another Archon after this. She begins to compose herself. No biting this time, okay? However, she still cannot recognize us. Perhaps we are the wrong Tenno for this moment. Who are you? I'm... well, I'm not... I'm Tenno! Theremin? All that? Ten? No. Back on the Zeramen 10 0, we are confronted by the man in the wall. Time's up, kiddo. I can save them. All of them. But you have to want it. Let's say we shake on it. They promise to save all of the children. We hesitate. But the void mad parents are now breaching our ramshackle barricade. She doesn't know who you are. No shit. What do we do? Back to the drifter. Ordis yells that the Lotus has become completely sentient. She pursues us with an intent to kill, and we have no choice but to run. Ordis sacrifices himself to buy us some time, but it is not enough.
back to the Zeremen, the man in the wall reaches out to us eagerly, their hand wrapped in void energy. We take it, and in the void's grasp, every possible version of the Tenno child is laid bare. One by one, all of our alternate selves go mad and die, leaving only two possibilities. The Child and the Drifter. Reaching across the gap, the Tenno Child uses the Void to repel the sentient Lotus's attack. Stepping out to see her, the Lotus can recognize us once again. Like before, she takes to the sky, this time not following Ballas, but pursuing him. With our return, the Lotus and the Tenno are separated once more. With news of our return, Ballas flies into a rage, insulting the masses for willingly abandoning their freedom to his own dictatorship, to his coup. Surely, in his mind, he means the sentience as well, though this is lost on Ara. Now armed with the knowledge of how to find the derelict of the Zeremin 10 Zero, we return to it to find more answers. It still swirls with void energy seeping through the cracks. It is empty, devoid of life. The closest thing it has are the effects of the long-fled Tenno who once made their home here. We managed to find the torch we left behind. <laughs> Still works. Hello? Then suddenly hear a whistle. 
we see the man in the wall step behind a corner to guide us. We step out to the ship's main garden, statues covered in vines, a duveri mask hangs from a tree. We continue to follow the man in the wall back to our room. A voice calls out to us, the source of the whistling. The drifter sits before us, gentle and solemn, yet in good humor. The drifter jokes about their relationship to us, the only possible reality in which we survived the Xeramen 10 0 but did not gain the power of the Void. What the hell? Hungry? Uh, yeah. Ordis. Okay. Yeah, but what are got all your warframes back? Yeah. Why did you so? Where's she at now? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, still missing a few from the deck. Hunting that golden freak, I figure. What's his name? Ballas? Wait, 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 wait. So you don't know. Ballas, right. <laughs> you ought to be more careful. I might not be around next time. Around? Okay, so what is this, then? Are you from the <laughs> future? Nah. But that'd be a lot easier to get now, wouldn't it? As far as I can make out, you're the me that got rescued from this shit, and I'm the you that did not. Not sure which of us got it worse. So you've been stuck here this whole time? Not here exactly, but yeah, stuck. You got bigger problems, right now at least. To freedom. <coughs> yeah, it's great. Ah, that's my cue, I think. Would love to give you a hand and all, but the way this works, Seems like finishing this is either you, you, or 
Me. You. So... What do we think? The wave function may collapse at every possibility, but only one possibility per universe. Do we continue as the Drifter, or as the Tenno we have been? We take on the responsibility ourselves. Just as the Lotus rescued us, now it is our turn to truly rescue her. The Lotus needs backup. your turn. Bring her back safe, kid. Protocols reversed. Orbital frontal section reattached. Running diagnostics. Corrosion minimal. Ah. All seals holding. Ordis. Stasis protocols lifted. Systems coming back online. Cephalon refit complete. Ready for operational cross check. Up. Uh. It's good to be back, Ordis. Good to have you back, Operator. Systems cross-check when you're ready. Looking forward to... Tearing balance in half. Finding the Lotus. Warframe vitals, strong. Warming up nicely. I've taken the liberty of rebuilding the Paracesis. Transference signal, strong. This thing... Seems to have survived in stasis. Hungry, no doubt. <laughs> the Nama fleet seems to be redeploying. Sensors show Murex clustering past Mercury. What is Ballas up to? Cetus. She's going to Cetus. She wants that Murex. Going after Ballas, then? Some kind of vengeance precept? Ordis had no idea she was strong enough for such a confrontation. She isn't. Not even close. We have to stop her, Ordis. way to reach that Murex undetected is up through the tower. We must speak with Konzu. With Konzu's help, we sneak through Cetus. Onko is nowhere to be seen, but we remove as many veils from the Austrians as we can while ascending to the Unum's tower. Afflicted with one of those wretched Nama veils. Tear off the lawyer mask. Run and hide. We must pull that oversized sentient leech from atop the Tower of Unum. Help the others as you helped me, Sura. I shall find a way. Master Tizanai is forever at your service. Sura! Quickly now! Come to the air dock! Hurry, Oots! Fly, my friend. Stay out of their gaze. On our approach, we hear Ballas' propaganda broadcast to Cetus. He speaks of fully committing to traveling to the Tau system, to become one with the way, 
if we continue to track the Taoist metaphors. But rather than truly being unified with the one true, unchanging substance of reality, we must remember that Balas can only serve us lies. To understand the final act, we must go back even further. To a philosophy older than Confucianism, older than Taoism, older than Platonism, older than the proto-philosophy of the pre-Socratics, older than Buddhism, older than even the Rig Veda. The locals believe this tower to be inhabited by a great spirit they call the Unum. And that she sees time all at once. I think it's just a metaphor. Sura, do not harm any whom you could save. Krunomet. Back to what may be the oldest philosophy I will ever have the privilege of discussing on this channel. Sebate. Wisdom literature from the 12th Egyptian dynasty, circa 19th and 18th centuries BCE. Listen closely so that I may tell you a story you have never heard but one that will sound all too familiar. Part 4. Africana Philosophy – Dispute Between a Man and His Soul Content Disclaimer – Light Discussion of Suicidal Ideation and Verbal References to Domestic Violence Entering the Unum's Tower for the first time, we continue the endeavor to remove veils from Austrian hostages, while also fighting off sentient guards, giving us some time to explore the ancient Egyptian concept of soul. You may have encountered some philosophical frameworks to the human soul before. We touched on Cartesian mind-body dualism in my original Warframe lore video. Plato divided his concept of the philosophy of mind into three parts, the tripartite soul. Both Sigmund Freud and Carl Jung copied Plato's model while shifting its focus and defined parts in their psychological models. But the ancient Egyptians were more categorical in their approach. For them, the soul, the self, was split into eight parts. Picking up anything strange? Nothing on my senses. Keep in mind, operator, this was your idea. The Ka, the vital spirit, the first inward breath, and essentially the reason a person is alive rather than dead. The Ba, the personality, the principle of individuation, and that which makes different objects, people, things, a unique member of a class. Ba is material and capable of desires without other parts of the spirit. The Ket, the physical body. When joined with a Ka and Ba, the Ket grants intelligence and the opportunity for the soul to live in the West, the field of reeds, the afterlife. In other words, heaven. The Sa, the spiritual body. This is the form the soul adopts after death if the Ket is given funeral rituals. This is, for example, the difference between a sentient and an eidolon in Warframe. The ib, the heart, is the seat of the will and a person's thought and emotions. The ib is their concept of mind and is corporeal, synonymous with the physical organ in your chest. For the person's soul to live on in the West, the ib must be weighed on a scale against a feather. The heart's burdens must be no heavier than one of Ma'at, the goddess of truth's feathers. The Ren, the name. The person's memories and experiences. So long as a person's name is spoken by the living, then the soul will still live in the afterlife. 
and two more esoteric parts that we have less parallels for in Western thought. The shoot, the shadow. This is the anthropomorphic, the human shape, any visual representation of a person, though most often found as the person's own shadow. And the sekhem, the form or power, has something to do with skill and ability, somehow connected with the gods Horus and Osiris, the two gods that are connected with the pharaoh's embodiments in life and death. Once a deceased person has been given the proper rituals, the sum of all eight parts of the soul are called the Ak, an embodiment of intellect itself with the appearance of pure light. I think we can easily draw parallels with the new war quests so far with Egyptian funeral rituals. The lotus, in her sentient physical body, her ket, died in the void. The drifter recovered her Adelon, her spiritual body, the Sa, then restored her through a ritual of taking power from the gods Horus, Anubis, and Wajet, representing wisdom, death, and birth restoring the lotus to an ak, a whole intellect. But the lotus is not able to get every piece of herself restored immediately. There is conflict within her and around her. She does not fully know who she is or what she wants when she left to confront Balas. To prepare you for the confrontation with Balas, I must tell you a story. A sebet a story of wisdom called Dispute Between a Man and His Ba, a work of unknown authorship. It is written as a dialogue in the same manner as Plato's dialogues, which were the first written texts to kick off European philosophy. The Dispute is one of the earliest and foremost works of Africana philosophy. With edits to help you, the listener, follow along, I will now perform this dialogue for you and with the help of fellow YouTuber Daniel Santos. He will take the role of the Ba soul, while I take on the role of the man. Without further ado, hear us begin the saga. My Ba's tongue was not partial concerning their opposition to bribery. I opened my mouth to my Ba so that I might answer what he had said. You are much against me today, whereas you have not quarreled with me before. I am not exaggerating. It is like I am ignored. So do not depart me. Attend to me in this. Do not depart me on this day of suffering. Look, my Ba misleads me, but I will not listen. My Ba drags me, but I will not go along with it. It casts me on the fire. Ba, be near me on the judgment day. Be my advocate. Say this one goes forth because he has brought himself. My Ba is ignorant about easing life's misery, yet still restrains me from death. Sweeten the West for me. Is that so difficult? Life is a transitory state. Even trees must fall. It tramples on evil, yet ignores my misery. So let Thoth judge me and sate the gods. Let Konzu defend me as a true scribe. Let Ra command the ship of the sun to hear me. Let Izdes purify me in the hall of judgment, because my burdens weigh heavy on the scale. So it is sweet for the gods to rend secrets from this ket, this body. Then my Ba said this to me. Are you not a man? I am. Are you not worthy of living? God's willing, but no! What profit is there in worrying about your worth, in the way nobility worries about wealth? I said, I will not depart this, nor neglect the West. If you flee, you will not be cared for, like a prisoner saying, though you die, I will remember your name. That place is attractive to my ib, my heart. The West is my home. If my Ba would listen without the figure of prejudice, my Ib agrees. He shall succeed. 
I shall make him reach the west like one whose pyramid still stands over his grave. I will make a shelter over your corpse, such that you will be the envy of Lesser Ba. I will make your shelter cool, such that you will be the envy of a Ba that is hot. I will raise my shoot, my shadow, and drink water at the pond, so that you will be the envy of a hungry Ba. If you hold me back in this unworthy form, you will not find your place in the West. Be patient, my Ba, my brother, until I am born anew. That man will stand by the tomb and be respectable in the West. My Ba opened his mouth to me to answer what I said. If you mention your sick heart, it brings tears to my eyes as though I made you miserable by throwing you in the canal. Thus, you will not see the light of the sun. But those who built granite halls, beautiful and sturdy pyramids, when the builders become gods, their scepters are destroyed, like lesser men who died in the canal, carried off by the floods, burned by the sun, and their corpses chatting with the fishes through wet lips. Listen to me. Look. It is good to listen to people. Enjoy the day and forget worries. I recall a peasant once plowed his plot of land and loaded his harvest into a boat. He tows the boat and sails near his produce. He watched the boat as the sun came and went. He recalls that his wife and child met misfortune in this lethal canal of the east. When he met his end, he said, I do not weep for that mother, because she passed by the west. I am concerned for her children who were killed young, before they were worthy. Now, I recall a commoner who requested to raise his status. His wife said to him that they will throw a feast. He went outside to scatter seed at the estate. When he returned, he was like a different person. His wife pleaded with him, but he did not listen. He was changed badly and disappointed the judges and bystanders. Do you understand what I'm telling you? I opened my mouth to my soul that I might answer what he said. My name reeks through you more than the smell of bird droppings on a hot summer day. My name reeks through you more than a hall of catfish on a hot summer day. My name reeks through you more than the ducks gathered in the reeds. My name reeks through you more than fishermen coming back from the marsh. My name reeks through you more than an unworthy man. My name reeks through you more than an adulterous woman. My name reeks through you more than a bastard child. My name reeks through you more than rebellious citizens planning a coup. Whom can I talk to today? Brothers are evil and friends do not love each other. Whom can I talk to today? Hearts are greedy and everyone steals from each other. Whom can I talk to today? Kindness has vanished, everyone is rude to each other. Whom can I talk to today? People are content with evil, cast goodness on the ground. Whom can I talk to today? Wrongdoers who should enrage make people laugh instead. Whom can I talk to today? Yesterday is not remembered. People do not help those who helped them. Whom can I talk to today? Faces are blank and turned away from their brothers. Whom can I talk to today? I am laden with misery for lack of an intimate friend. Death is in my sight today, a cure to a sick man. Death is in my sight today, like the smell of myrrh, like the smell of lotus flowers. Death is in my sight today, like a man longing to see home after years of imprisonment. So surely there is someone in the West who is worthy by virtue of being purified of defects. Surely there is someone in the West who boarded the ship of the sun by virtue of bribery to the temples. 
Surely that someone in the West would not reject being petitioned by Ray. My boss said to me, Set mourning aside. You belong with me. You are my brother. Throw your burdens on the fire. This struggle to be worthy as you've said. Love me here and forget about the West. Rest assured, I wish that you reach the West, that your body lands and I may rest. But when you are outcast, we shall make a home together. What has essentially occurred in the story of a dispute between a man and his ba is that the man, a noble, is depressed at the state of the world and his own personal moral failures. So he wishes to bribe his way into heaven by building great monuments before he takes his own life. His ba, conversely, attempts to tell him that not worrying about his or anyone else's worthiness is the actual path to being worthy. Dying prematurely, seeking fame through fancy monuments if you fail to simply work hard, find contentment, and let people live and let live. Failing to empathize with the suffering that death brings to the living. All of these things will only serve to remove your worthiness. As a side note for later in the New War quest, the hieroglyphics that I translated as worthy is closer to godly and juxtaposed against primitive or common in the story, which I translated as unworthy. When you compare this message to ancient Egyptian society and its preoccupation with building monuments and being remembered, it is a scathing critique of nobility itself. And within Warframe's Buddhist inspirations, it creates an opportunity to juxtapose the Buddhist religious philosophy of embracing change, letting go of permanent attachments, and doing so as a means to cessation of the suffering in life. Yet the Ba somehow manages to stay empathetic. The Ba does not meet the man with critique or hate, but responds to the man's doomsaying with compassion and companionship even after they are rejected by heaven. The man is a character meant to be seen as someone irrationally racing toward death. Armed with the knowledge of this reference, we may return to the Tenno ascending the Unum's Tower. The sentient ship atop the tower prepares to launch. Before it can get away, the Unum speaks to us. Freezing space-time itself to give us the edge we need to reach the vessel. The Lotus warns us to stay away. We urge her to let us help her resist Balas's abuses, but she refuses, saying that it is not our responsibility. Contact! Contact! Nama blockade ahead! She's completely outnumbered! Outgunned! What? By Star! 
Ross. The lowering shields. She still has some command of the people. But not the one ship Ballas now controls. The great sentient weapon of the old war. Do you know what she was called? Pagasa. The Devourer. Yes. We know it. A ship that feeds on debris and derelicts to rebuild itself. Please. You're not thinking straight. You need more time to heal. There is no time, no mercy for Narma. Pregasa must be stopped before Ballas can fulfill her original purpose. Pregasa cannot be allowed to feed. As we fight to catch up with her, we urge her to think of her own needs first. But she warns us of a sinister purpose behind Ballas' ship, the Pragasa, a ship designed to consume the sun. We are sent flying from the ship of the sun, the Pragasa. Floating in space, Cephalon Psy delivers to us our railjack, and we pursue, wondering to what end Balis would want to destroy everything. Balis wants to reach Tau, the one, the way. To do so without resistance, he subjugated the entire origin system, promised love, peace, and freedom as he erected great monuments to himself on every planet. And now he boards the ship of the sun to sail to the west. Well met, Tenno, but no time for reminiscing. We are under attack. Target rich environment. Get on those guns. Your ex shields down. She still has fangs. Time for the big gun. Get on it. Immediately. 
Slingshot range. Orphix pulse fields detected aboard. Get a necromech in the barrel. You will need it. All right, sorry. Get clear after launch. We are now close enough to the Pragasa, but an Orphix field blocks our warframe. Our only choice is to launch our old war necromech, a heavy duty weapon that uses a mummified corpse as the conduit for our transference and we are greeted by Ara. My father was right, but it's too late. I cannot stop Ballas. No one can. Soon, my people, and yours too, will all be destroyed for the pride of one man. Ara has finally seen the error of his ways, having now heard Ballas' true intentions. He does not believe we will succeed in stopping him, but he is willing to let us try by leading us to the final Archon. Era warns us that Balas's plan is to, once again, subjugate the will of our mother Lotus by manipulating her memories. He does not want to go to Tao alone. Balas wants a friend, a loved one, to go with him, like the man arguing for the cooperation of his Ba through guilt and bribery. Balas wants Nata to become Margulis, to be what he loved once more. The ship continues to collapse under the force of solar flares, and Ara holds debris from collapsing so that we may approach the Archon, take its core, and use it to restore the Lotus. to give her the strength she needs to resist Ballas. As we defeat the Archon in battle, Ballas mocks us on our approach to his throne. What a glorious reunion. You and Mother Dearest both come to send me on my way. I am ready, Tenno. Are you? Ballas stands before the red gold sun disk, having opened a gateway through the void to Tao. As always, haughty and proud. Again. He commands the Lotus to serve him. I had something different in mind. Clearly lying about his claims to cease his destruction and to help the Lotus heal. I loved you once. You were so like her. You dreamed of a Margulis you could control. But she chose death over you. Balas, at some point, knew that Nata, the sentient mimic, was masquerading as Margulis because Nata resembled her, because of the Orokin's vain faith of seeing aesthetics as truth. That was enough for him. I said to stay out of this. But you can't, can you? Still 
desperate to save her from herself. You never truly knew her, did you? What she most needs. Balas steals the Archon's core, its power within him cannot heal the Lotus, and he can forcefully command her on a whim. He commands our mother to kill us. Thinking on our toes, the only way to break her free is to break the symbol of his power, the sun disks, using the lotus's power. There's a good girl. Repair the hurt you have dealt us. Have dealt me. No! no. to have a child and with an open heart I gave you this and my reward being left to watch as all your love my love poured into the bottomless well of this abominable child As she regains herself, she denies that Balis has any meaning or value. He denies that she, a sentient, can feel pain or even anything at all. Yes, let's discuss what I did. I, who have endured your torture of me, your lies, your betrayals, without complaint. For you. And this is my reward. You. You. You lie. You are small. Pitiful. Nothing behind it. Pitiful, broken thing. A puppet accusing her maker of a lack of substance, was it? Take your punishment for you. Ballas, uh, uh, 
Stop. Spare them. Spare them. And I will be whatever you want. Shut up! You are making me do this. And when this child is dead, you and I will have words. He sees her as a tool and turns to abuse us, her child, to get the Lotus to submit willingly. But we continue to resist. Her kind can't feel pain, all lies. You never understood me, my vision. My future lies with Tao. Not here, not with you. Stop! Stop! She has this coming! Do not interfere again! I cast you from my sight, Lotus. Balis whines and complains about a universe that never understood him, that he was greater than common people, that he was worthy of being godly. Very well. I give you my death, and yours as well. The unstoppable annihilation of every single last thing. Pleased? Satisfied? Are you now full up with death? My vision is only ever comprehensible to myself. My ambition beyond the grasp of people. Thus, I have always been your death changes nothing. What are you? Tell me that. What barren, disgusting thing have I let into my house and my heart? Tell me! Child. Run! Run? Where should they run to? You only destroyed everything! And if he cannot have that, then he happily hastens everyone's death, including his own. He berates and harasses the Lotus. Alone at last. No! Now, kneel. until we turn the tides by placing his own veil of lies over his eyes. Margulis. Kiss me. Then, with a kiss, the Lotus steals her power back, draining away his life, his power, and then...
From the void, a wall in the shape of the Vitruvian Man appears, but lacking the top of its head, its mind. With a sinister grin and missing index finger, the man in the wall sits atop the Vitruvian Man's half-missing head. The wall speaks to us. The one impersonating us laughs. The Lotus tries to resist it while shielding us with her power. But as if toying with us, the wall vanishes. The Lotus collapses and we bring her back to her chamber to rest. to do. Narmer's shattered, but they've got a martyr now, and the old guard are already eager to fill the vacuum. If you're ready. I... I'm not sure. There are voices. I am not one. I know. But maybe you could choose one voice to lead the others. It's your choice. As she has always done, she hides what she may know of this Vitruvian man. But the Tenno are more concerned with her safety and who she wants to be. She has spent her whole life fulfilling a role that others wanted to see in her. Young. Brightness. Hanhao and Ara wanted to see Nata. Yin. Darkness. Balas wanted to see Margulis, Yin Yang, Balance. There was only ever one role that she chose for herself, Space Mom. The Lotus has returned. I see violence and suffering in our future. We will need compassion and strength in equal measure. I am the Lotus. Thank you for watching my friends, subscribe to the channel, turn on the bell for notifications, like the video so that the algorithm shares it with people. I will see you in the next one, and as always, stay true. My child, my friend, what was done is done. Ballas is no more. We have both woken from that nightmare at last. New dangers. New choices await us now. Few will be simple. Each moment unfolds into a thousand petaled bloom of possibilities, and each one we will face together. For now, rest. Dream of who we were and of who we have become.